Mr. Jang, you made one interesting point earlier. You hate to borrow. You don't like to owe. Now, the question is, what specifically will your administration do to reduce the debt burden in the country? Um, Haruna, uh, Gambia belongs to the HIPC, like the highly indebted poor countries. And uh, there are certain privileges that we can, that we can enjoy. You know, and uh, all they're looking for, you know, for us as a country and as a government, you know, to have uh, fiscal responsibility. You know, we have to be responsible because no matter how much money you pour into an administration, you know, if we don't have people, you know, who put country first, you know, there'll be mismanagement and there'll be corruption. So I think we have to put up anti-corruption -corru measures. You know, we need to have value for money. You know, because if certain monies, you know, flow in between us and uh, government collects and distributes, you know, during the process of collecting and distributing, you know, if we have corrupt officials, you know, who tamper with certain monies, at the end of the day, we will always, you know, have the need for money. And when there is need for money, all we do is stretch our hands and borrow. And every time you stretch your hand, you know, there will be strings attached. That is this interest. You know, so I think uh, what we should focus on is uh, to have, you know, people who are patriots into the system, you know, of our, of our governance, you know, and uh, we should display a high level of, of, of character ethic, you know, as my colleague, you know, rightly mentioned, you know, and uh, as, as human beings, you know, we all have needs. Everybody into, uh, in, into the sector of governance is a father, you know, is a husband, you know, and uh, have their own needs. So that survival neuron is there. And when you look at the salary uh, levels, at the end of the day, if, you know, the guy does not have integrity or the woman doesn't have integrity in that position, whenever you have the chance to uh, loot or mismanage or, you know, funnel funds, you know, you're going to, and who's going to suffer from it is, is, is the state. You know, I think it all boils down to us in the system, you know, at the end of the day, it's two robots interacting with each other. We humans, we are organic robots, and uh, the systems in place are placed there by us. So I think the problem is us, you know, and the solution is also us. I think we need to really look at ourselves deep, you know, and put country first, you know, to be able to take this country to the next level. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Jase, are you with us? Mr. Jase, are you with us? Yes, I am. Oh, thank God for internet. DK Telecoms is powering us tonight. They are the reason you are on with us. So thank you so much, DK Telecoms, for the internet service today. Mr. Jase, one of the things about Gambia and Gambians is what belongs to everybody essentially belongs to nobody. That being the case, State-owned enterprises don't tend to do well because of ownership issues. What structures do you believe your government will put in place to ensure state-owned enterprises will function and make profit? First of all, let me give you an analogy here. If you are sent to the well to draw water in a pail that's full of holes, what is the likelihood that you'll be able to take any water back home? Chances are zero. Mm -hmm. The water is our resources. The pale is our nation. The holes is corruption. We are losing a lot in corruption. Um, there is no way in the world where when people are left alone and not held accountable, they try to do the best they can. If you understand people, once they are being supervised, once they know they've been looked at, once they know they're being held accountable, they tend to behave better. Accountability is what's lacking in our government. We must come up with a system in every sector that holds every government official accountable. And when you deviate from government procedures, you are held accountable. For instance, not long ago, we heard of a situation in which it cost Gambia taxpayers over $2 million to transport three boxes from, of COVID-19 vaccines from Guinea-Bissau to the Gambia, something I could have done in my car for free. 
up to today, we haven't had much about that case anymore. We are encouraging um, corruption because we are not holding anyone accountable. As if to say, those who should be doing, uh, those who should be taking the responsibility of holding people accountable are themselves involved in it. We need a new government, we need a new system that would come in and create a new financial instructions. The old one we've been using is certainly not working. And uh, we must have a culture of holding people accountable when they do wrong in the public sector. Otherwise, we will continue to do things as they're being done, Thank which you. is not helping anyone. Thank you. And this is exactly, I don't know whether you can hear me. Yes, um, we can hear you. And this is exactly why we keep failing. Um, people get away with what they do. The, 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 the behavior is reinforced making them think I can do it again and get away with it. John sees the same thing and does it. Uh, Fatu sees the same thing and does it. And it becomes a natural culture. We are a very corrupt society and that needs to stop. We need a government that would, uh, that would focus on this. And that is why I think someone with the mentality of law enforcement, of obeying the law, should be the leader in order to at least set the record straight by at least setting the example that once the law is created, it Thank will you. be enforced at all me by all means. If you observe my my participation in this, I am sticking within what I believe is the parameters of our Thank hundred days because you, that's sir. the rule you set. Thank that's the rule I want to follow. Thank this you, is sir. my nature. Thank you, sir. And this is exactly what I'll try to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we uh, Kitabu. Now the state-owned enterprises. What will you do to ensure they are profitable? Uh, actually, if looking at uh, our situation right now, uh, most of our state-owned state enterprises are not uh, profitable. Because, uh, like I said before, corruption is a problem in this country. And if corruption is a problem, we don't have laws to tackle corruption, we are still going to have the same problem. Like, uh, if we are elected into office, what we will do is, you know, we will come up with people who have the sense of nationalism to make sure they see the country first. Because that's the most important thing. You know, uh, today, we need to invest. The country needs money. But how does it, how do the country have money? But the problem is, uh, like I said, we need assessment in every sector. We need to know the people working there. Is there any transparency in that place? What are the mechanisms we need to put at that place to make sure we earn money from those places? So uh, to just uh, sit down and say that uh, we're going to do this in this sector, we're going to do this in this sector, I believe in uh, assessment force. We need to know the place. We need to know what is in the places, you see? So if you do that, I believe we might see they, they come Sulu Saji Malu in that place. Because beating, uh, that's the problem. Most of the, these offices, we have people that are not interested in seeing the Gambia move forward. Mm -hmm. So for the Gambia to be successful, we need, those, we need patriotic citizens to be able to run okay. offices and to be able, able to, uh, to, to, to pose the country forward. But okay. if we don't have that, we still have the same problem, corruption, and you know mismanagement, uh, we wouldn't go any anywhere. So that's my stake, and that's where I stand. Thank yes. you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kuram. Uh, foreign direct investment. Africa continues to be a interest, high interest destination for foreign direct investments, for all sorts of investments, in fact, because of the high level risks, the instabilities, non-performance of economies, etc. In your first 100 days, what sort of confidence will you want to inject uh, so that foreign direct investment becomes uh, a living example in your government? Thank you. Um, I think foreign direct investment is, uh, number one, one of the key things that you need to boost your economy up. We've seen examples in the NICs, uh, the newly industrialized countries in South Korea, Taiwan, etc., Singapore, foreign direct investment plays a critical role. Now, a foreign investor coming with the money, obviously is not a fool. And Gambians or Africans must not think that a two-up 
coming with money actually you know, has just got money and he doesn't know what to do with it. These people do a lot of research on a country. If you want to come to the Gambia to invest, you probably start with the internet, free data, and then you research on the country. Then you will begin to see a lot of things even before you come in, and then most of the time they come and ask you questions, the answers for which they already know. So the key to attract foreign direct investment is to build a meritocratic system. I said that government and economic social systems are dynamic systems. They are not, not like natural systems. So we said meritocracy is the key, right? If you have a society in which people get things according to who they are or who they know, obviously your system is not meritocratic. And any foreign investment who that comes in is usually put off by 10%. Give me 10 percent, and a small cut be, right? Not 10 percent, oh, right? Or 10 percent, oh, what like a foreign direct investment for? To our world, a corona at Lenya Dile, a Dundi Banko Kang. Now, for that Bunda follow me to Nako Konko, a guy at 10 percent, Kong Kong $1,000. It cannot. My friend here is, uh, I had a small chat with him, and he's an investor, and he will, he, he will tell you, I'm an entrepreneur, right? Even though I'm not a foreign direct investor, but I've been in other countries. It is very frustrating. So, to get your people coming to invest in your country, you must clean up your system. You must have a system in which people can access information, people can be able to register their businesses right, without any problems, people can be able to do transactions with minimum amount of cost and time. It has to be efficient. To make a government efficient, I mentioned by mentioning, by, I stated by mentioning a number of things. For example, information in our government is lacking. They cannot even tell you how many staff they have in the civil service or public service, not to talk about how many citizens they are there. Data is very, very lacking. And e-government, another point, uh, one more minute. Another point, uh, Mr. Drame, is um, Mr. Soto is a Nobel Prize winning author, and he's an economist. He said that if you want to remove poverty, one of the key things you have to do is look at the land of the country. In this country here, only Banjul and Serakunda. Only Banjul, Serakunda, Brikama have got a lease land. What is the problem? What is a, a lease is just a paper. Why can't we lease the whole country? If you don't lease the guy who is in Janjambure or URD, you don't lease his land, he cannot even borrow $1,000 from the bank. Because the bank tells him, the bank tells him, I need a lease document. So what's the problem with the lease document? It's just a piece of paper. Why can't they give everybody, just like an ID card, lease every land in this country? If you don't lease in America, in England, in Europe, they lease every single inch of those countries that are a thousand times bigger than Gambia. Every single piece of land in Ohio or New York is leased. A farmer in Ohio can borrow money just like a flat owner in New York. What about Gambia? People have 10,000 acres in Kiang and they can't do nothing about it. They will remain poor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, we, we, I let you uh, go on a little bit longer than you should because you were making a valid point and we will agree. But we'll give the same opportunity to all of the participants here if they are on the same trajectory naturally. Mr. Jang, before we hand over to the journalists here to ask questions in relation to presentations so far made in the last hour, would you agree that corruption is the biggest, biggest economic challenge of this country? Yes or no and why? Actually, uh, I, would, I, would, I would agree and uh, uh, we all know uh, where corruption stems from. You know, Gambia is uh, literally a poor country and uh, everybody is on the survival mode. And the same uh, officials who made it to the top, you know, are the same individuals, you know, who are on the lower rung of the ladder. So obviously, if they see themselves on top of the ladder, you know, definitely they will, they will survive. You know, like uh, like in Wolof, you know, Dafun Kuligay Kai, Ted De Kai Lain Kodef. You know, and uh, if you see uh, survival, you know, obviously you will be you will be you will be corrupt. You know, I will I will I will definitely agree. And uh, we have a uh, lot of things that are affecting us. You know, uh, other than corruption, you know, politics. You know, and uh, a high level of destruction. You know, from uh, focusing on the what uh, focusing on the job to be done. You know, because when you look at uh, uh, recently, you know, before the current president, you know, set up a political party, 
you know, shortly uh, after he set up the political party that he is running now, that was when the country uh, you know, started going deep down the drain. You know, because at the end of the day, it it, it distracts him, you know, from uh, from from uh, from his responsibilities, you know, in office. So we have a whole variety of issues that are that are really affecting us, you know, and uh, it's it's a pity harona. I will I will go back to uh, COVID-19. You know, we are about to encounter a global crisis that if you don't put our acts together, you know, the country will, uh, will witness something very drastic, you know. So uh, I think uh, we, should re we should really focus, you know, on, 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 uh, on, on the job to be done, you know, to get the country, you know, from the level that it is, you know, psycho emotionally, you know, economically and socially, you know. So uh, that's, that's, that's my point. Thank you so much. Uh, Ablai Jawa is here with two microphones. We will go around if any reporters, journalists, presenters, any media house has any questions. We will change the rules slightly. We used to say you must specifically ask a specific person a question, but let every reporter, any journalist ask any participant any question, and we will guide their responses. Ask a direct question, introduce yourself, your media house, and shoot a question directly to any of them. Anybody with questions, or you rather we wait to the end entirely? Before we go, is yes. your hand up? Yes. Okay, there's somebody here. Okay, then go ahead, Abla. Yes. Here. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, we it would be to... great if you would stand up so we could also see you and appreciate you. Thank you okay, so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Alkali Cham. I am independent observer, but I'll use this to um, ask a question. Um, to ensure economic growth, one element, one very bad element that we need to trim completely is to, um, is to fight corruption. Corruption is something that is trying to um, um, weaken our development as a country. So I want to ask uh, the, the presidential aspirants, what mechanisms or strategies would you put in place to ensure that this ill practice is completely expunged from our public sector? Thank you. Who, who do you want to respond? Um, specifically, um, Mr. Kurang, who is um, economist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm also an accountant, and this is a very relevant topic. Uh, that's why I said, get me voted, because I'm the only chartered accountant. You are campaigning, <laughs> sir. Could we answer the guy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Corruption, obviously, is a serious problem because we've seen so many countries with oil, gold, and diamond, and they are still in the doldrums because of corruption. So what do you do to eliminate corruption? I think, uh, obviously, like I said, corruption starts with the president. In the Gambia, everything starts with the president. You know, and the president must admit that. We are not electing a party. The Constitution gives the mandate not to a party. It gives the mandate to a president. So it starts, the ball ends and starts with the president. And people said, the first thing you must do to tell us that your hands are clean, declare your assets. That's the beginning. Because if you don't, then there will always be some questions that cannot be answered. How much did you have before you become president? And how much did you have five years later? If that question cannot be answered, you cannot eliminate corruption. A president who cannot do that will not be it. So, Corruption, again, is about systems. People talk about systems. I said it in uh, my speech here. Systems are very interesting because you have systems and subsystems. The whole government is a system, but people ha we have got departments, ministries, etc. A system is a combination of things. Transparency is another factor apart from the presidential responsibility and declaration. Transparency, Mr. Drame. A transparent government. How much do we, the, we are very glad to welcome the recent bill in the National Assembly called the Information Act that people can ask questions, but we know that's not the end. There is still more and more that needs to be done in order to be able to solve it in transparency. Information must come out and it must come out in time. Corruption, people say, also is a culture, but I don't think you know, it is any different in any country, right? In China, in so many other countries where they have developed, I think they have been able to tackle corruption, but it starts with the top. So really, really, the question comes back to normal. Our, our constitution wants to eliminate corruption, 
but it is also telling the citizens to elect somebody who they think is going to remove corruption. I think, uh, you know, that's a very important do, do question. Do you feel your question is answered? Partially. 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 What's left? Can now? You, you can which, ask him to follow up. Which part? Muna I want to ask you. Please take the mic. What specifically you, as, as the president, that you will do to fight that corruption? Yes. Good. Good question. First thing, I will declare my assets on my first day in office. One. Two, I will conduct an audit. There is already an audit, a financial audit on all the institutions. Most of the institutions in this country, it is lying there on the desk of the president. I will look at that report called the Janet Commission. And then if I have declared my asset and I have looked at that report, I think that report need to be, need to be. Because the main reason for the implementation of the Janet Commission was not a political reason. It was to remove corruption in this country. To set examples. Now we have parties who have got members that are indicted that by that commission and they ask, how do you expect those parties to come and eliminate corruption when their key members are already indicted by that commission? Think about it. Okay, we, we go. So an independent candidate is the solution now. The power is with the president, not with the party. Thank you, Mr. Kurang. You, you advocate for independent candidates. Ablai Jawa is around with the mics. Yeah. Um, apply, applicable. Is the law still applicable for people that are from party or that came with their presidential aspirants? Let, let's ask, the let, the, let the journalists ask. Okay, strictly for it, the journalists. This is media, it's our media people. Oh, okay. If you, you are coming with a political party, we will not. You will not ask questions because you'll ask your president the question. Thank you. So let's go with the media guys. Um, Radio, TV, newspaper. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Juve, you have to stand up. Hi. I wanted to look why, at something. Why are you bluffing? I need my computer. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you can. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. So my name is Mod Lamin Juf um, of Taranga FM Radio. Uh, Mr. Haruna, if you would allow me, I would want all of them to answer the questions that I am going to put forward. If, okay, if that then is let's allowed. start with Mr. Jase. He has not spoken in a while. Okay, so three questions I have actually. One is they've all been talking about um, corruption, 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 and they've not made mention of the National Audits Office. This is an office that is established to look at the account of government, to look at everything that is happening. So I, I have seen something very interesting, and I want to know how they're going to address that um, in their first 100 days in office. Um, the 2016 report. Um, we've seen that 17, at least 17 payments amounting or totaling to more than $72 million were made without adequate supporting documents. Um, we've seen also $59 million plus another $40 million, you know, petty cash um, that they spent, um, uh, some of the embassies spent, and then there were no justification to those spendings. And when you look at the ministers also, unpaid loans, amounting to $6.5 million, just to, just to get the facts that corruption is something happening, even though they, you know, they've been talking about it without evidence, you know, pointing out things that we can look at. How are you going to address some of these things highlighted by the National Audit Office? That is one. Can I move to the next question? Let, oh, no, I let's have them answer. They, they cannot keep track. It's okay. long enough Excellent. already. Mr. Jase, <laughs> could you respond to that? All right, thank you very much. You see, Many people may wonder why the international community has focused so much of their attention on security sector reforms. You see, it's a simple fact. This is a simple thing. International experts, development experts have asserted that you must have an effective, efficient, equitable, and accountable policing within the country. That way you can sustain all your socioeconomic and political developments. Um, we have excellent laws. We have excellent um, 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 re regulations and all. What we lack in the Gambia is enforcement. We do not enforce any of those. For each and every one of those violations that uh, the gentleman mentioned, there are consequences that should have followed, but there was no enforcement, which means we reinforce the corrupt behavior. Had someone been identified, apprehended, and prosecuted, and if found guilty, sentenced by the court to what was appropriate, it would send a clear signal to others that this behavior in us is unacceptable. 
if I know, and if anyone knows for a fact, that they can take money and get away with it, the chances are, in most cases, they'll do so. So it's not a matter of any creating anything new. It's a matter of just enforcing the laws that are in place. That would go a long way in addressing all of the corruption. And uh, we can also begin to immediately utilize um, technology in terms of um, electronic financial transactions, ensuring that within the first 18 months in office, a go my government will make sure that uh, cash handling in the Gambia government will be down by 50%. And the next uh, one year, six months, in the next 18 months, it will be 100%. Many, many countries are fighting corruption by simply going into e uh, electronic transactions. This is what we need to do. We need to stop piling cash in the office for someone to take it home. And uh, because electronically, once you put your hand into the cookie jar, you leave prints, footprints are left behind. We can trace the money back to whoever took it. And then prosecution can take place. The appropriate action will be taken and the individual will be held accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the problem. We are not enforcing our laws. We have very good laws. Like uh, Mr. Kurang, uh, he was looking at it from an economic standpoint, but I'm looking at it from a law enforcement standpoint. I guess that goes to say that if the only tool you can use is a hammer, you tend to see everything as a nail. He's looking at it from the economic standpoint. I'm looking at it from a law enforcement standpoint. That tells Thank us you. we need all of these efforts to come together. There isn't no one solution. It's a, collective, it's a collection of solutions to solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Jeng, you wanted everybody to respond to that question, then we come to the second. Is that what you said? Or you have a specific question for everyone? Maybe now I can just go to my second question for the other candidates. Okay. I think this Who? Jeng? Uh, yes. Okay. So, on uh, uh, the question of uh, corruption, you know, okay. I think... Uh, let, let us wait for him to ask the question, and then we, you can make it pregnant. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, this year, the government spent um, $524 million to import fertilizer into the country, okay, and then subsidize it. So farmers were supposed to buy fertilizer at $700. Last year, they brought 11,000 tons. This year, 20,000 tons. Yet, farmers are still crying that they did not receive enough fertilizer, okay? Um, a good number was exported to other countries. How do you think we can solve this problem? Because this is as perennial as the grass. It happens every year, every farming season. You can ask the farmers, this is a persistent problem. So how can you address that, Mr. Yang, in your 400 days? Actually, you see, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, corruption, I think uh, we have to use a broad approach because at the end of the day, you're talking about human beings. You know, we have, uh, we have our behaviors and we have our attitudes. And the same people that are involved in corrupt practices, they engage in corrupt practices simply because they have no, uh, there's nothing that regulates them. You know, I think we should focus on prevention, detection, and uh, we have some form of punishment, you know, if somebody is caught with corrupt, doing corrupt practices. You know, I think uh, looking at the whole system, there is no sector that you go and you will not find corrupt officials who are engaged in, 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 in into corruption, simply because there are no preventive measures. You know, and uh, if you see somebody funnels money because they have access to money, you know, as uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Jassy rightly mentioned, you know, we need to sift, you know, from the physical uh, handling of cash you know, into electronic, you know, way of dealing with money. So we have the banks, we make business of them, you know, and who's going to suffer is, 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 is the ones that are supposed to benefit from these things, you know, from people who are put in position, you know, to be able to take care of them. But at the end of the day, the farmer is, is just equal to the guy in the office at the end of the day. They're all, you know, poor and they're all hustling, they all have families, you know, and they're all surviving. So it's just survival of the fittest. So I think uh, there should be uh, very strict measures that are put in place, you know, to detect, you know, to prevent, you know, and to punish at the end of the day. So that's my stance. Is, is that answered? Okay. Uh, I go do th this question will be your last for the whole evening. Really? You have taken so much time. Okay, yes. No problem. Last so, question. Yes. So punch last. anybody to hard. Mr. Fatih. Mr. Fatih. Yes. 
Um, we've seen in the Gambia, whenever the president is traveling, the public will be limited to use one way, and the other one would be reserved for the president. I want to know what your view is on this particular thing. Do you think that is a right thing to do, or you think there is a better way to do it? This is a problem that most Gambians are talking about. What's, what's your take? Uh, thank you, Mr. Juf. Uh, that's a very important question. But I think I have to go back a little bit into a uh, corruption uh, issue. Uh, because, like uh, I usually say, we come uh, when we uh, brought all these things in, this procurement, these kickbacks, and all this stuff, that's are the things you know encouraging corruption in many offices. You need to go for your money in an office, they will push you to, to, to procurement. You go to procure, procurement, somebody will tell you that you have to give me something for are you, you to accept. Are you answering Mr. No, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Or, or you're going somewhere else? No, I'm coming, I'm no, coming. Please arrive, answer his question, then I'll give you two more minutes to talk about No, I, I, will, I will arrive. Uh, like you said uh, about the using of the one way, uh, I don't think uh, it's good for, for a system. Because you are this, the, the president is the servant of the people. So, no, it, using one way, it's like you're wasting money, you're wasting resources, you're wasting the time of the people. So, you know, in like development countries, you don't see things like that. But why in the Gambia? A country that needs to move forward, a country that needs development, you know, and people are in the society. They have their deliberate through going in and out of the country. You have six, pe six people coming from Basse to the, to the, to the Combos. So if you use one way, one way for the people, it's like you are disturbing a whole lot of people. You know? So most of our, 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 our development are not decentralized. You look at our, look at our hospitals, uh, we have a problem. Somebody will be sick in Basse, he has to come to, to the combos. So going, coming to the combos, the president uh, is going out, it's a problem when you use one way, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Because I've... I myself have been into that situation. I don't think it's proper for any president to do that kind of thing. It's 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 not it's, it's even inhumane. It's not it's, it's very bad. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. No, Mr. Juf, you give our mic back. But uh, for purpose of clarity, uh, Mr. Jase, as a security expert, would you want to comment on that? Certainly. Um, there are two times that the president moves. And each time the president moves, there is a detailed plan. Uh, they know his itinerary. The, the security knows his itinerary. They, they are familiar with the route that he's taking or she's taking, and they plan accordingly. What fails in the gamut is there is no good planning. Um, what needs to happen is when the president is moving within the country just on his regular work as president, they can actually time it to where the roads would be closed, nothing more than four or five minutes before he arrives and immediately open. But when he or she has a visiting guest, like an, a state visit from someone else, then their route is closed for a long duration and traffic is diverted. They would know that af uh, ahead of time and such a diversion would have been created with the traffic police assisting locals to go about their business without, uh, with limited interruption. Um, the reason for that is because we have to remember that when we have a visiting head of state in the country, there is a serious risk that um, that, that, visit, that visitor may have an enemy that may come into our country to, 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 to do harm to them. So we have to put up all of the security measures. We have to ensure that the guest comes in and leaves safely. Um, it is not correct the manner in which it is done. And when, the, when we go into security sector reforms, I have created a new unit within the, the Gambia Police Force that I would implement called uh, the, the, the Gambia Police Force we'll Highway get, Patrol uh, Unit. We'll this get to will security sector reform. Unit. We will get to I security mean, sector reform. Okay. Yeah. Then I would, I, would, I would save that for now. But uh, like he said, it is a concern. Citizens uh, must be put under consideration when the president moves. And it could be done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Juf, that would answer your question, right? Okay, then let's move to another person. Is it okay? Yes. Good evening, everyone. 
I am Sam Abob of Paradise TV. Um, um, with your permission, sir, Mr. Drame, I would want to ask all these four candidates of these three questions, please. You, you cannot do the Morujuf style. <laughs> ask a specific one, please. Okay, um, to Mr. Jeng, yeah. what, what are your plans with your government in trying to invest in public transport? Okay. Yeah, if actually, that is answered, I could ask the other two questions. No, let's finish with him, then you do another question. Okay. If you ask too many questions at once, it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. What will you do about public transport? Assuming public transport is a problem, which I think it is, mm -hmm. our drivers now will cut a single journey into three or four. So you'll pay $10, descend, pay another five, or $10, descend, another one. Gold behold, you're from Banjul and you're going to Brikama. Public transport and these van drivers and taxi drivers have made it impossible. Now, going to Bakau, you pay two fares or three. Going to Sukuta, you're going to pay three fares to get to Sukuta from Serakuna. Before, there used to be one. So, public transport is what he's asking. What will you do about it? Actually, we just need regulations and uh, enforcement, as uh, Mr. Ja Jase rightly, rightly mentioned. Because if uh, uh, a society is, is, is left free, you know, to do whatever they want without any scrutiny. I think uh, they will just do whatever they feel like doing. So all we need is just regulations, you know, and uh, enforcement. Thank you. Uh, um, if, if, I may, if, I, if I may make it clear. Um, to Kurang or Fati? To Kurang. Uh, yeah. to, to, to Kurang now. Yeah. But I just want to adjust to Mr. Jeng. You are but not debating here. You are asking questions. <laughs> if your question yeah. is not answered, you can re-ask the question. Okay, okay. You are not debating. Okay, then. Um, to Mr. Kurang, um, what is your plan or what are your plans for your government when you're in office to help um, um, in any way abolish this uh, so-called tribalist politics in the Gambia? Thank you. That's um, a good question, actually. I think uh, um, tribalist politics, has, uh, you know, just like any other problem, need a diagnosis before the solution. Uh, we've seen it emerging you know, over recent years. And I think it's very obvious to ignore it as a society would be, you know, very dangerous. Um, but I think the main reason is because the politicians have nothing to tell us, have nothing to show for what they have done, have failed in the transition or have failed to do, the, execute the social contract, so they turn to tribal sentiments. They turn to tribal sentiments to appeal to people's emotions in order that in instead of rationality. So, as a society, we are a country of Muslims and Christians, and I think we have to fall back on our basic religions. We know that each and every religion that we practice in this country is against discrimination. In Islam, it's obvious. In the Quran, it's highly stated. It's a rujatun ardun rajan wa bussatul jibalun basan fakanatu habba munbasha for on a day, on a day when the mountains shall become dust, there will be only three tribes. Where the people of the right, where the people of the right, there will be only three tribes. There will be no Mandingo or Wolof or Jola. So if you say you are a Muslim, or you are a Christian, and you know that this wall is temporary, and you know that there will come a day when they ask you, are you a Mandingo? You will say, Anasabi Kun. You will deny your tribe. So what is the fuse about? So I think as citizens, we need to reject the politics. I am never afraid to address the issue. I was on the tour just recently, and a woman asked me, Ban het nga? I said to her, well, I speak Mandingo. My grandmother is Sonanjai, it's a Wolof. My surname is not Kurang. If I go out of Kudang, they call me Kurang. If I am in Kudang, they call me Seidi Kurang. My surname is a Tukulor surname. But I told her, look, man ragaluma ben het si dekabi. Muna maluta, mana ko hamgaluta. I can tell any head anything because I train 20,000 people. I never discriminate. No student will come forward and tell you I ever ask them what is your tribe. So, what is tribe? I'm not. Ragaluma Ben Het, as a president, I will execute, and then I am advocating for a national. I have seen how people solve this. So they may Liberia, English language, they call it Labran English. So they may Sierra Leone, 
English lang dila ka. Singapore, English. America, English. Alright. There is a solution, my friend. It cannot be Mandingo or Fula. It has to be something that is development and that will connect us to the outside world. We have to make our children speak English. That will eliminate it. So, there has to be a government, a president coming in. Must have practical steps. Not just preaching the scriptures will solve this problem. This need practical problem. In Rwanda, in Singapore, Gambia, we are, ni we are nice. The Jolas are Sanawia with cereals, isn't it? The Fulas are Sanawia with your But still that, they still kill each other. 20 years ago, we saw in the TRRC. But then, so what is the solution? In Singapore, if you talk about tribe, you have a problem. They have the National Security Act in public. In Rwanda, in public. We need to be more serious, man. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kura. Um, now your final question. Final question. To Mr. Fati now, and, I and suppose. And Mr. Jassi. Oh, Mr. Jassi. Both, both okay. of them. To both of them. If, okay. If, if both of Jassi them could answer this. Jassi first or Fati first? Fati first and close with Jassi. My friend, ask one question final now. It's Which one, one? one in two. Choose or one. Two in one, yeah. Choose one person and one question. Okay. There are other I, people wanting to ask questions. Mr. I, I, I would love Mr. Fati to answer this question. Okay, go me. ahead. Um, Mr. Fati, we would want to know what are your plans um, for your government or what are your plans with your government in decentralizing our public offices? Because we could see all offices are in Banjul, which lead to a lot of um, traffic jams and the like. So what, what are your plans? Thank you so much. Uh, that's a very important question. Uh, that's a big problem we are facing in the Gambia. If we take office, of in our first 100 days, we will try to inv invite the Alcalos and the Sifus and the, you know, the chairmen, the local government. We'll invite them uh, for a meeting so that we, we can decentralize the development plans because it's very, very important. You look at other countries, like I usually say this, in America, I didn't go to America, but I believe somebody can be born in California and he will grow up in Cal California without going to Texas. Because what is in California is in Texas. You have the same, you know, amenities, the same infrastructure, the same development. So the same thing should happen for the Gambia. What we need in the combos is what we should need in the in the in the in the in the in the villages. So it's very very important to decentralize. At least we take the uh, Minister of Environment to the URR, Minister of Agriculture to the CRR. I think that those are things that we need to do because in other countries. People will drive one hour, two hours to go to work for a, in, in a place. So I, Gambia is too small. So we can do that. We can decentralize and try to you know, involve the whole country into development. Because now if you look at it, some of the villages are even stagnant. You know, for more member Kaburoto, Kaburoto more left on the other side of the world. Because more people are going to be in Sandoto and others are going to be in So I'm not going to be because you have to come back to the town. So the most important thing is let's try to decentralize. Right. Let's try to create universities in the, in, the, in the villages. Let's try to you know, uh, open up arms to make sure we have companies and other things in the villages so that people can stay in Chara, in Badibu, in Kiang. It's very, very important. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kitabu. Uh, Ablai, maybe we have one more so we can go into security sector reform. We have done 90 minutes. I want to be the last person. Yes, I you want to be question. the last person? Okay, single questions directly. Yes, ugly boy, who's going first? Yes, uh, my name is Fatu Samar. And oh, is that your name? Okay. Yes, that's my name. Okay. Uh, the like to ask a question to see all of you. Uh, see, you know, Abu Bakar Jeng, Kura, Fati, and Jase. Dengan buka just tahu kuneka independent candidate sunde me besi kanam dengan muna lengato agianen parties. Nyu buka hamrek niene ibarin niene dengan kuadef ku get fame niene ni niene dengan kuadef not because of anything paski Gambian si hamun len. Ma buka rek ngawah Gambian si dah niene dengan def liku fame. Not the end of any coalition at any party because you better get one few parties like Len Hamsi Gambia. Yen you talk fee can ham with Len, you better say I'm an interested debate. Mabuga ham like Len Moisen turn to Silolo, Jerej, Fatu Sam, Gambian Talents TV. Okay, let's start with you, Mr. Jase. Are you looking for fame or ministerial position and you may not actually go to the polls December 4th? Jerej, I did not turn to Chiwalov, Kodefe Mumbingo Ak. 
ton tu bimu lajte um number one ñu man ci sama wax gis gis man doomi gambia la um yagana ligéyal nguur gi euh defna lepp luma mun pour tawal sama rew ci jamono ju ne um nekkon na fi prisina dik sama rew um ligéy na ci police bi ligéy na immigration jappale na amna ñu bari ño xamna ñi ni suma romba dinañ ma xamé euh sonne kenn xamul len waxal na yo xamul len euh way man man ci sama ci sama sama um bopa suma tour ek na fuma yegu um mr jeng ngi fofu len mr jeng jamono ji ma nek mal tu mr jeng mo ma dan jité mo dan ñew sa juma ju ne ñu jité ñu julli juma um ñun xamantene euh mr kuran ku ko ken ku ko ken xamul dem ku ñu wal xam la parce que wax yi mu fi wax su ko doomi gambe xamul dem ñu ngi ñu ngi xam ño xamne waru ñena xam di xam ño xamne ñi di ñaak xam ño xamne ñi ño jara xam um politique bi ni mo démé dafa nécessaire pour ñu understand né nit ki su joggé ba taxaw pour taxawal réewam ci beginning bi euh alé lam da ci def ak ñi ko jappalé ñi ko jappalé ñu ngi jog di jël seen time di jël seen alerte di ko ci def pour ndik taxawal réew so decision bi ñu wara make is up to them to make the decision but keeping in mind the interest of the nation yow sa gis gis ak wala gis gis ci kenen moy xejna bo xalen parti man boko na parti way bama boké ci parti ba gis na né euh ni ma ni ma suma ids yi deglu wuñ ko euh gambia yaga na tawal parti ben parti musu la liggéey gambia mu réclé le mister euh mister kurang wa mais bi time bi jot na pour ñu jël ño xamné ñi ni bokku ñu ci parti pour ñu mëna am di independence pour pic ñi nga xamné ñi ñoom la ñoo mëna tawal ci ministère de position ak yeneen appointment because so bokké ci parti dañ la limite pour nga jël only ñi nekk ci parti bi pour do len place way so dami assad independent candidate yow mën nga pic képp ko xamné ki ni fi nga né o sa comité bi fi la né ki mën na mën na participer man tay suma nekkon fi ministre suma fi nekkon president mën na wax ba paré né ci groupe bi ma nekkal ni I already have my Minister of Economic Affairs. Mun na seti benen pati. Am nga ñeneen ñu xam ñu ñu fa. They should come out they, they, they could be brought on board. Xaw ma ndax yaag ma dega, Mr. Jassé. Bu dé yaag ma dega, ya ngay xawa sa ca film bi. Euh légui ndax yow di nga likalo benen pati pour dem wala yenen nit wala sax bu la pati woyé tay dik la né. Bo bokké suñ ñun suñ falo ñu def la ministre. Wa wala dit am suma bugo na nek ministre dina xaar ñu def ma ministre te ma la yegal ni ofo won nañ ma ministre position jëlumako parce que xamna ni suma ko jëlon liggéey bama nas fas yene def duma ko doon mëna def man ñoo mo pour ud liggéey dama ñoo pour def liggéey lolo tax ma bok ci politique is very clear thank you so much uh, mr kuran same question will you join any party you can answer this in mandinka if you want or in wolof same that uh, she's asked the question i i think you prefer wolof oh, right oh. okay wolof so go mm. go with wolof sir no xam nga mbir mbir mi mbir mi xam nga lalla wolof o mandinka i will answer the question as it is asked okay okay right dina answer ci olof mbir mi xam nga lalla nekut na ni ñi xam nañ la na xamuñ la lolu amut sola luñ xam ci yow mo gëna important amna pati yo xamne ya ngi wax ne ñom ñoy pati yu mag yi xamnañ lena ci ñom ba pare UDP ak NPP fa fi sa ak fa ka waku la bena pati bi mo xaj mu ne ka bena okay dundung ak dandan nga wow kuma tane wu degge dundung ak dandan pati amna fe ñu xaj ko lan mo ci uté ye bena motam mané luñ xam ci yow mo gëna am soxla nda ni ñi xamnañ la du non amna pati yo xamne taxaw nañ fi ñu ngi wax ne pati bu mag lañ man gisumako ma ngi dox dekka bi for almost one year 12 months ma ngi waxtan ak nit ñi wat gambian si lu ñoo wax jarut ma deglu kenen mu wax mako ma ngi jos joge ni dem ba basse la nekkon time bi ma ngi won bakadaaji this time i know what xamna lu nit ñi reka di wax ne luñ gis doyut lan luñ gis doy lan so luñ xam ci ñoom mo gëna am soxla ndax nit ñi xamna ñu ci yëpp 
ay popular men len kitabu xejna moma gena popular fi gamye yeb senegal guinea bissau xam nañ ko so xam nañe du utat menen popularité right mr jassi and so on man nega na fi ay ci television bala 20 years ago right even 1991 so musma uti ministeya ci yaya jamme musma uti ministeya ci baro suma students yi nega nañ fi ministre musma dem ci ben president nga ne ko jox ma place mo baye jane commission ofa nañ ma pour ma jël place mané no man titala lolu doyna ma way fum ne kan ni neguma di outil parti ma mané wax na ko ci buma commencer di wax mané parti su fekkon né ñom doxalon nañ lo xamné right jarna ak yoon bi ni kon ñun duñ jog ñu taxaw way sen interest mom lañ jito ci interest de kabi mota ñun ñu jog so nekut uti place mota ñu jog te ni ñi xamnañ lolu gambia fi fum nek ni disay danguñ baro moko wa di nga muna mom sa parti way momu lo ken wa fona fona bobu setna wax do ñu setna euh kitabu bena tontu bi ci soose wala ci olof euh mën na jaxase bor yeb ñaar yeb wa jaxal cause man euh defal soupa ah exactly euh lolu du am solo la torop far samba Uh, comme suma natangoy niñ ko waxe rek euh ñun euh nekut rek ne dañ jog rek ngir nek ak git lolu du lolu du wax gi because tay gambia dafa soxla jëm kanam te jëm kanam go wonu foguñ ne parti yi ni ñu fi nek ñoñu ko mëna jox because tay euh politique bi yeb dafa jaxaso nit ñi het lañ de wax nit ñi luñ de wax comme pour nga gis ci gambia sa def de jafé so lolou mota ñun yeb ñu jog te man su fekke yu fi daraja la comme musta qur'an num ko waxe man recently i went to guinea bissau comme jali baka fu ñamen til tan tu ratan te til tan ni saba tu ratan ni saba lolou lañ ma reyal nak so uh, su fekke popularity i think am more popular than even the big parties leaders is am am popular than them because am all am known uh, sub region bi yeb xam nañ ma so i believe the most important thing is nga buga sa rew nga uh, am knowledge bi because education is totally different from knowledge that's what we are facing right now you have educated people who are not knowledgeable to advance this nation so what we need is we need to come together and show the big parties that this is gambia uh, and the gambia we really need is in us the people not the parties thank you so much mr jeng fok na ci soose wala ci olof ñu tontu na dugg ci olof way duma jellu waxtu ne man boko ne ci suma philosophe façon la te yu melni duma den nangu mu jellu waxtu ci man to me i see it is a reactive question and uh, we are in a proactive platform wow so man dal dina tenk suma tontu uh, di ci kanam rawut but and uh, ki la te question bi mom fofu la tollu tollu wayam la te he na bu geureu motax mu lacc ko dina tek suma loxo fi ñu continuer you know pour dem ci ali kalaj ki jerejef bala ñoo ali kalaj ablaye ja wa sa last question ñu soga ali kalaj ndax ah okay yeneen ñaar ah dañ wara laal ci reforme ci dete reforme ci fok na ya kam ti nañ ko itam waye nak buñ joxe waxtu fok na li def de bax yeneen tam ngeen am li ngeen waxtan ak askan bi fok na amna solo kon ngeen ngeen ñu taxir lu ñun yeb rek ñu yaatal mbir mi rek defé na euh koli okay um am mahmoud and i have question for everybody actually oh, and um i'll start with kitab you've made mention that you're going to eradicate or stop youths from going to back way and you've also mentioned that you're going to have discussions with these youths to know what their problems are and after knowing their problems Oh right now we all know what the problem to youths are. I think you shouldn't tell us that you're going to have discussions but we want to know how are you going to solve the issue of the youths in order to stop them from going to this um dangerous journey of backway. Because I mean we already know why youths are going but how are you going to stop that before you say that you're going to stop them from going? Okay, let's go ahead. Okay. Ganen saba to ganen saba. Ha. Uh, aku mata bakala ku mo ñi ngi karo ku mata bakala uh, i think i can go in mandinka right yeah. uh, yes uh, gambia uh, 
na nienda banko jibe 60% is youth you can understand uh o funding kelo dum fanam bi nyim banko kanjang ni nata wolle folo la nin campagne be kekang nka wuru wolle la funding kelo na si rango le lo ko be ke ka understand le mol be benna kino be do mol ko be be kela barna bo tawala e kanyi nan tolle la but b there are lots of plans that you can set up for the youths pour mon kamma banko eta nyato and those plans i'm coming and those plans look at our sea we have to take ownership of our sea we we have uh, youths that are born in these coastal areas they know the river and they know how to face if pdp is elected in the office we'll make sure we take ownership of our sea and give it to the youths we are not only going to push them into the sea we're going to invest in them we need to buy low, uh, uh, big canoes and you know fishing trawlers and give it to them to fish and sell the products in the gambia that will be an income for the youths and the country you see you even our taxi drivers we have lots of gambians doing taxi ta taxi in this country but it's very very simple go and order cars and bring them here give it to the youths so guy dem taxi taxi so guy ñewé 300 government ñom ñu mom ko 200 bi mu dem ci government bi lolu halis la is important push them into sports help them look at our uh, uh, look at gina bas and 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 and, and ibrahim kamara they did well with sports sport is what unite the country but are we investing in in sports so ñun suñ ñewé speedy has a pdp uh, government will make sure we invest too much in sports it's very very important not even only sports even agriculture you know youth can do because me my mom is a old woman but uh, in 2016 i went to jara ala farakin wada madam ma boto tan saba and he was using all the hands so if we i believe if we uh, start you know buying machines using technology the youth will go into agriculture and if they go into agriculture in the next near few a few years will be food self sufficient so i believe uh, all these mechanisms will help the youth to stay in the country and work uh, harder for the country and earn something for themselves and earn something for the country thank yes you, you. is that answer good enough for you yes we we'll go yes. to the next candidate uh kurang yours is going to be a pregnant question actually um i hope you can deliver you you've, you've worked with the jane commission and um, of recent you've mentioned about some couple of hundreds of tractors of former president jam have been i mean parked at one place and of course we've seen farmers been given donkeys if you were in power and those tractors were still lying down there how would you i mean distribute them to the farmers in order to uh, revive back our agricultural system and of course um you've talked about social security not doing of course what they're supposed to provide in housing for people but just giving i mean 20 by 20 only few gambians can um, afford and the cost of rent is of course high if you become president how do you solve this problem to make sure the social security do what they're supposed to do in order to make housing easier for gambians good thank you very much um i think it's a good question in an executive presidency most systems are as good as the president you know so if uh, mr jassy for example said we have good laws in the gambia we inherited them from the british one of the most efficient civil service you can find in the world is the british civil service and they handed over to us a police system a civil service system perfectly but are they working they're not working so your police service for example will not work if your president is not working right the jane commission had a similar problem the presidency the executive power was not interested in the commission so the commission was just going on like a football match without a referee you understand what i'm saying so when the executive it was the executive that was the stakeholder that gave the contract to the commissioners who are not civil servants but are there to execute a specific task so you should be on their neck all the time to make sure that they deliver the justice minister was the go between between the commission and the civils and the and the and the executive so in the case of the tractors that were at stake that's a typical example of what is happening in the gambia since 2016 this whole government has been handed over to lawyers to run all the commissions receive money they are not trained managers 
I don't know whether Gambians know that. They are not trained managers. Most lawyers in this country tell you they are businessmen. They only employ one secretary. That is what was the problem of the Janet Commission. We set up a system. We are trained managers. I was brought to the Janet Commission simply because I'm a systems accountant. We set up a system to deliver and discharge these tractors under a transparent system. Because of political interest, that time, Baro Abe UDP Nyanyinkane Yolon. So, because of that, anything that works for UDP works for Baro at that time. So, I was fired. Some people even say I was APRC, even though I never shake hands with the chef and then I never met him. But then the thing was, political interest took over. The lawyers who took over the system when we left did not understand what was the procedure, the business processes you have to put in place to discharge the tractors. So they kept talking and talking and talking and talking. And the tractors, the rain was coming, July, August, September, rain, rain, rain. Tractor le banco male foka pare, lal nain souf be pare. Nyungi ta hao chi police station ni, tau munge nyau. Tractor bi da fa ya hudu amad njering, lolo mo ta mune, mane. Three months bugai jail to dispose. They didn't know what procedure and processes they have to do to do it. It was a business process. If you decide to dispose. You may argue or not whether disposal was a good idea by the commission. That's beside. But once a decision is made, a business process takes over. We were there as entrepreneurs and systems accountants. We set up a process with the police, the investigators, everybody. We put it together. They dismantled it. They came, they couldn't run it. It took them three months. The country lost almost half a billion dollars. So that's what I said. I don't know what was the ending of your, la your last point was what? Because it was pregnant question. The social security housing, and housing. Yeah. Because, because uh, the cost of rent back, is just beyond. Back to my statement. In an executive presidency, every institution is as good as the president. You saw in the Janet Commission, more than $5 billion was taken away from the social security during the Janet government to do so many, many fancy projects. Duman Makowa. So they make the internet be Mumfa. The testimony is there. The money was squandered. It was not the problem of the accountant in the social security. The orders were coming directly from the president's office to the board and to the managing director, right? Because there was an executive presidency. So the social security, you cannot blame them. The same thing now. The question is more for the president. Where is the housing? The pensioners' money is there. Or social security, for your information, is richer than many banks in this country. Because pensioners have more money than banks. Banks have no money. They fight for the pensioners' money, like life and death. So the social security has money, the pensioners' money. My argument is that, why is it only Bakote that this country can boast about for 55 years? Why not Katong? Why not Gunjur? Why not Basse? Why not Farafenye? Where are the houses? The civil servants are still working for 50 years, and they are still renting the policemen. The money is there. The money is there. Halis be Mufa. But the systems and the powers that be need to have the interest of the people and the know how to execute it. Thank yes. You. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jeng now or to Mr. Jase? Yes. Um, I'll shift to um, Mr. Jase, of course. Um, Mr. Jase, um, we all know this country has a loan that um, our grandkids would probably pick it up after we're gone. How do you, as president, manage the economy of the country so that we can do away from, of course, adding more loans to the ones we already have, or the ones, I mean, of course, coming? Oh, okay, thank you very much for the question. Um, first of all, we have to recognize the fact that Gambia is a poor country, and as such, we cannot afford to be wasteful in the, in the limited resources that we have. So that takes us back to the issue of physical discipline and, and, and management. We have to fight corruption because we're wasting a lot. We're wasting a lot of, a lot of our resources. Once that is done, to, stop, to put the, to put the uh, men, the holes that are that is wasting our resources, we now have to turn to the reality. And in every nation, the engine of growth, of economic growth, is the private sector. 
we need to start empowering our local content. We need to start supporting our local content. You see, when it comes to um, uh, direct in, uh, international um, investment, who enjoys some of these tax breaks, what they do is they come and take advantage of the tax breaks and they leave. We have to now put our focus on what is ours. And I would go as far as to say, in order to kind of like um, energize the youth, especially in entrepreneurship, I will consider bringing back the NTC concept. The NTC concept would give opportunity to the youth to become entrepreneurs. They'll be helped by government I mean, to, to, to engage, and they'll be given the tax incentives that are necessary to keep them alive. They'll be giving, they'll be giving low interest rate loans so that they can survive. And also, uh, it would help bring down the cost of food in the country. We must create an environment in which the Gambia, the locals, engage in business activity, profitable business activity, without having to pay all of their earnings to taxes. There must be tax breaks for these local, local small businesses. As I mean, there has got to be a codified tax system so that it will have a threshold. If you do not reach the threshold, you will, you will not pay a certain amount of tax. We must help the local content. We keep um, losing a lot of our resources because of number one, corruption, and people who come in, take what they can, and, and then leave, and we are left holding the empty bags. Um, when it comes to I mean, creating a better economic, economic um, um, environment for the Gambia, I can say again, it's corruption. We must fight it. We must um, uh, support entrepreneurship. Um, we must look for other ways in which to generate more revenue and uh, stop creating um, these this, uh, allowances that we give to top government officials because the people who receive the, the largest amounts of um, the, the, the largest amounts of allowances are the very people who have the highest salaries. They're the ones who get to travel abroad and get per diem. The people that are at the bottom who earn about $5,000 a month never have a chance to travel. They don't receive per diems. They are constantly poor. So we need a complete overhaul of the system. Like everyone is talking about systems change. We need to look at things from scratch. And we need technocrats to do this. The best that Gambia has to offer, it cannot be foreign-led. It has to be a Gambian-led solution by Gambians, for Gambians. And then this is something, when once well-documented, we can present to our, internet, to our uh, in development part, developmental partners so that we would begin to get on track the fact of the matter is Gambia is off track in just about every sector, and we need to get back on track. This is why I said, um, I would go as far as to say that once we establish the youth, I would consider passing a law that would bar non-Gambians from engaging in retail trade. Foreigners can engage in wholesale trade and manufacturing, but retail trade, I am going to keep that sector for the Gambian, for the local Gambians so that they will not have to compete with, for instance, an Indian who's running a, 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 a mini market. It is unfair to have an Indian come all the way from India with their resources to run a mini market that the Gambian was supposed to run in the first place. So I think what we need to do is to start looking at what's ours, protecting it, developing it, and keeping it for ourselves, whilst we also try to take advantage of the Gambians in the diaspora who are living in economies that are advanced and who can actually contribute towards the economic development of the country. Give them opportunities for investment. This can happen. For every foreign investor in the Gambia, I can assure you there is a Gambian who has equal access to equal, to equal capital and is willing to, uh, to, to, to invest in the Gambia. The fact of the matter is Gambians, when they come to Gambia to invest, they have no desire to pay for, for bribes that foreign investors may be willing to do. If you look at the State Department report, it says that there is a tendency of foreign investors to come into the Gambia, bribe foreign I mean, um, government officials so that they get the, 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 the contracts that they, they, they look for. So this has to change. It has to, we have to look from within to start solving our problem instead of looking outside. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put a stop to this now. We go into security reforms and then we come back. Uh, we've, we have spent uh, almost two hours now already, so maybe we'll borrow another 45 to an hour to conclude. And in that sense, uh, like I said in the beginning, let's just open it up. I mean, you guys, this may be a great opportunity 
that we have several media houses together and you know, we, we, we discuss, people want to have answers and we should provide them as much answers as they would be able to take from this debate today. Now, uh, switching gears, going to the reforms. It, it has been a campaign rally in this country that reforms will be cardinal. We talked about 22 years of dictatorship. We talked about changing the winds, changing the operational modus operandi of this country that we would now shift gears. I think that's why we established so many commissions, from the Jana Commission to the TRRC, to the Constitutional Review Commission. I mean, the security reforms, uh, law and order. We talked about so many reforms in this country. Where we are, four years going to five in. This is what we're going to interrogate now. Each of you will have the same five minutes to talk about your strategy for reform. What sort of reforms are you looking for in your uh, first 100 days in office as far as these sort of reforms, law and order, and other enforceable commissions, fighting uh, order ailments in community, establishing, and of course, creating confidence in the security services of the country? One of the things that a lot of politicians are now questioning is, why do we still have economic in the country? Do we not support and or even agree that we have security men and women in this country who can look after the country and we don't have to look for outside the country? So we'll begin with you this time, Mr. Fati. What sort of reforms in this aspect are you looking for? All sorts of reform except economic, now that we have talked about the economy. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, security reforms is uh, key to every country because a secured nation is a safe nation for everyone. Uh, but looking at things in the Gambia, uh, it's like uh, our security is dormant. And it shouldn't be like that because we have very able and good security personnel in the Gambia. So uh, having all the securities from other countries uh, to be serving our president, uh, to be in our barracks in the top places, it's something that we need to run away from. If PDP is elected into office, uh, I don't think uh, the economic will have two weeks in the Gambia because we have the, we have the capability. <laughs> yes, we have the capability and we need to give the confidence to our securities because uh, they have done it in places. They have done it in Liberia, in Darfur, in other places. So uh, we, not, we, we, we just have to give them back the confidence and let them serve the country because that's what their country needs. If you look at the burglaries in this country, it's too much. And we have the security. You look at the, 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 the thieves and everything in this country, and we have the security. But why are they not you know, coming out? Because they are not considered. And it's very, very important for a president to know what is in your barracks and what is, in, uh, what is with your uh, security. Because uh, I personally, I usually go to the uh, Yundum barracks. Uh, that's, where, that's where I usually take my wife for, for, for antenatal and other things. But uh, I believe they really, really, really need to be considered. Gambia is a youthful nation, and most of our youths are in the security service. We need, we need reforms, but I believe it's all come back to the system. We need to change the system. We need to sit down and assess and see what is the problem. If we do that, and I believe we can achieve big in our reforms. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Kuran, five minutes. What sort of reforms, apart from economic? Now we're not talking about numbers. We're, we're not keying in numbers now. Thank you. Well, we may still end up with numbers, knowing uh, how many securities we need. <laughs> but um, I think security sector reform is very critical. Um, I always like to make reference to the Prime Minister of Singapore, the man who changed a country from a poor country into a developed country in three decades in one generation. And he has this to say, right? How would you be secured? if you only send the children of the poor people to the army, how would you be secured? You cannot be secured like that. Every citizen, every family in the country must have a stake in the security. That is why the Youth for Change on a Change Party manifesto suggested 
national service, just like in Singapore, in Brunei, in Rwanda. A national service does not necessarily mean giving guns to our young people. No. On the contrary, it means that putting security as a matter of concern for every family. Now, look at it like this. Why do we say that you cannot only have poor people in the army? It's not safe. Think of an army man. You give me a gun, you give a man a gun, and he has no food to eat. He has no proper house to, to sleep. You ask him to go and defend the country at night, and there is a riot taking place. I'm taking this example from Lee Kuan Yew. You have a riot taking place. You ask this man to go and put down that riot to stake his life, to stop the riot. The first thing that comes to mind is, what will I defend? Who am I defending? Am I just defending the president? Should I just go and stake my life to defend a president who spends millions of dollars on Dawal? No. I go out as a citizen, as a security officer, to defend myself, my family, and the rest of the country. But how do I defend myself if I have no property? I have no house to defend. I'm a security officer. I have no good house. I don't even have a place to sleep. What am I defending? There must be a stake for our security in the service. So when we talk about security sector reform, we must think about it in this sense. We spent about $2 billion on a transition that gave us nothing. That money could have gone to implement a security sector reform. You cannot just implement a security sector reform by saying, Babu Kassise, retired. Lamin Fati, promoted. No. It has to be a comprehensive policy of taking our young people, putting the future of our country in their hands, giving them the proper orientation, making sure that they have a stake in the country by investing in them in terms of education, in terms of giving them a stake to the national cake. The politicians have been chopping the money since 2016. The military, they put them in buses, they go to Yundum Kam and then Fajara Barracks, Four o'clock, they put them back into buses again. They go to their families. No part-time job. How much is the salary? Did you ask? I'm a banker. I was working in the bank. Some of them are getting less than 3,000. How many people here? How many people here can survive on 3,000 without rubber rubber? A man with a gun is not supposed to do rubber rubber. He is supposed to survive on his salary. He is supposed to have a house. So security sector reform must start by making sure that the people in the security system have got a stake in the national cake. So reform starts with that. There are other types of reforms. We have a health sector reform. We have an agricultural sector reform. But obviously, all these reforms, we have discussed them along the way. I think the key issue, like you said, that is left is a security sector reform. Some of the generals need to go, but then they must go back to a house they cannot go to an empty place. They cannot go back to where they don't have rent. Obviously, go. What am security sector reform? Fali amira munam security sector reform ti. Amang ki kaito ti de. Ika vo doli ne si, doli wuli. Ye army reform. Obu ka ke kodo koma. Nim politician oli kodo be no mo ya be di mo like transitional reform, investigation upon investigation. What about the police? You cannot have a security sector reform without money. So we are suggesting that a national service be introduced to every family. To have, President founding in Singapore, the prime minister's son goes to the army. And then they are earning good money. In Singapore, an army officer can become the director of the civil aviation. In Singapore, the army officer can become the head of Gamtel. Because they go, the army is a university. We need to build an army and a police service and a security sector where the security. Thousands and thousands of young men, you put them in camps. Look at 1994. Why do you think there was a coup d'etat in 1994? Most Gambians don't like to come to the point. Let me tell you one small story. My uh, friend. I think you should quickly come to I, the point. I borrow two minutes. Yes. Right? My friend served in Liberia. They came from Liberia in 1991. They were demonstrating on Denton Bridge. You know what they did to them? They suspended them. They dismissed them. They jailed them. 89 members of the, the, the infantry battalion retired before the 1994 coup d'etat. There was a vacuum. There was a huge vacuum. The Gambians didn't pay the security officers. 
These boys were sent to jail. They were retired. They left the army. The vacuum came. You know who took over? The people who never went to war. Think about it. Thank you, Mr. Quran. Mr. Jiang, five minutes, the sort of reform you'll want to see that is different from economic reform in your first 100 days. Um, actually, I think uh, in certain cases, we have to uh, be very you know, logical, not emotional. You know, when you look at uh, uh, security, you know, it has different components. And uh, all these components, they have a role to play in society. And there's a governing body, that is the ministry. So if you want to bring about a reform, you know, I think you have to put each and every sector in perspective, you know, to be able to bring that synergy, you know, bring in the army, the police, the immigration department, and every security sector, you know, on a round table, you know, for them to look at the security issues of this country, you know, with a broader perspective. I think from there, you know, involving the experts, because you have to involve the right people. It is a process, and uh, the process needs steps. And these steps, you know, need uh, some consistency to be able to get to where we want to get to, you know. And uh, when you look at Gambia, you know, I think uh, the security issues here is not that complex. You know, it just, it just needs, you know, the involvement of the right people, you know, have the right, the right knowledge, because knowledge is the antidote here. You know, looking at uh, people like Mr. Jassy, you know, whose, whose expertise is, is, is security, you know, and uh, probably all the people, you know, who have their different expertise in different areas when it comes to our security issues. You know, I think uh, the way we look at things, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a problem. My approach, you know, towards, towards reformation, you know, is engagement. You know, once you engage, you will know exactly what the issues are. Otherwise, you'll just duplicate your efforts, you know, towards trying to solve a problem. It's going to be costly, you know, it's going to take time, and at the end of the day, the country is at a level that, you know, we need to be very proactive, you know, in the way we approach things. So my 100 days of office, like I told you, I'll have a very, very serious technical audit, you know, to see what's wrong and where, you know, so that I'll be able to know who identify and associate you know, and bring the right elements, you know, that will give us, you know, a proper, proper security reform, a blueprint that will take us, you know, to a level, you know, whereby, if not all, you know, we'll be able to tackle, you know, the most pressing, pressing security issues. That's my point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jang. Mr. Jasse, first 100 days, what sort of reforms would you do, sir, besides economic? All right. For all of the sectors, one has to understand what's in it and what needs to be done to change it. So and you're going to have to use technocrats to do this. For each sector, I am going to get the right people with the right background to go in there and look at and make an assessment of the sector and then make recommendations for change within the one first hundred days. This is necessary because, for instance, if you took a guy like myself and asked me to do an assessment of uh, the economic situation of the country and ask Mr. Kuran to do the security assessment of the country. I, I hope internet is teams. not changing. Okay. I will set up teams that would look at each sector and come up with an assessment and the way forward. And that, like I said, would be part of our uh, strategic direction. When it comes to the area of security sector, the, all the work has been done. I was involved in it. I read all of the documents. I wrote some of them. I participated in writing some of them. And uh, all we need right now is implementation. Security sector has stalled because of one reason. There is a general inability within the security services to link conceptual advice to the practicalities of implementation. That is, they would read what's on the paper, but they are unable to actually put it on the ground. And this is where we need to get started. So within my one first 100 days, I know exactly where the documents are. I know exactly who was involved. I know exactly what to do. I will start security sector reforms immediately because all of the work has been done. Gambia, when it comes to the internal security, I will be looking at the police, number one. 
The police, what we need to understand is that the present policing system we have in the Gambia is not based on the British system. At no point in the history of the Gambia have we had a British style of policing. What we had, or continue to have to some extent, is a colonial policing system. A system that is a policing system that is designed to protect the crown or to protect the state house. There is no, I mean, this is what is known as regime security. What we have done in SSR is to create another part of security reform that addresses human security. That is the security of people like you and I in our homes, in our streets, feeling secure like the president would in his state house. And to do that, we came up with a, with, with a double, double layer. And it's a, it's a, it's a two-pronged system. One is called the, the Gambia Police Command, National Police Command, and the Gambia Police Force Regional Command. The National Command deals and, and operates just like the General Murray, if you remember the General Murray, um, years back. They are a national police that have national jurisdiction, and they work at a certain level and have specific jurisdictions. And with this, within these jurisdictions, um, they are the, the, the number one force that would respond. And then you have the regional, regional sector. The regional police I mean, uh, system has already been introduced because right now we have police commissioners in every region. What needs to happen is to make sure that police commissioner um, reports only to a deputy inspector of police and nobody else. This is to bring about a total decentralization of the police services. So when you have the regional police system, you will have the Banjo Police Command, KMC Police Command, North Bank Police Command, West Coast Police Command, NBR, URR, and so on and so forth. Each would have its own commission of police, and they will operate completely independent of, its, of each other, and their jurisdiction is only within their, 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 their region. The, the National Police would work like the Gendarmerie to support all of the regional police departments and to have spe specific jurisdiction. It is important at this point that we create two new deputy inspector general of police, one for the regional command and one for the national command. To separate them, that no way minute, the reporting, uh, reporting um, pattern would be easy to understand in, and in, put in such a way that every single officer will report to only one superior at any given time. No two, no three, just one. You get your sets of instructions and you report to just one supervisor. This is the system we created. And another thing that needs to, that, we, that, that is already done is that the idea of removing the security services from the civil service and call them the civil and, and come up with, a, with, a, with an act called the Security Services Act and also have the Civil Service Act. This is important because then you can begin to separate the two. For instance, if you, because of the nature of their job, you want to increase the salaries of uh, uh, the security service, you don't have to increase the salaries of every civil service, so, uh, every civil servant. Sir, you, do you can want only to make do your last two minutes. Do you One minute. Your last two minutes. Two minutes. No, we owe you two minutes. You want to take that now? Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. All right. And this is what we will do basically in the in, uh, internal security. And when it comes to the military. I would say that we maintain a military and have three battalions, three battalions of 1,000 each. Now, what we do with these 3,000 men and women is not leave them in the country to run around aimlessly, but to actually create an army corps of engineers within them and an army corps of um, health technicians. The army corps of engineers would be responsible for building roads um, that are not the primary roads. These, these are the field roads, schools, um, uh, health centers, um, as well as other public services that the communities need. One of them, one of the, one of the units within the Army Corps of Engineers would be um, water treatment specialists, a team that will be responsible for ensuring that every single community in our country has access to clean running water. Only the Army is the asset, the national asset that we can use to do this. So it's about time we train them, equip them, and send them out to do this, because as I have traveled the country. What I realized is that water is a tremendous shortage. In the abundance of water, we are thirsty. That is unacceptable. And we have the military that could be reorganized, reoriented to do that. When it comes to the, to, to the 
healthcare sector, the military could be trained to become the primary health care givers in the country. They will operate by using mobile health care units that would go into the villages to actually, on a regular basis, to bring health care services to people who would otherwise not have it. This we have done in, in, in many countries is being done. We need to start utilizing our military asset to serve our people. The Navy, I will not call it the Navy, I will transform it into a, a Coast Guard with specific jurisdiction. They will have a specific responsibility, which would be to, um, they will be responsible for port and coast security, Time drug interdiction at sea, aids to navigation, search and rescue, Time um, secu and, and marine, marine safety, and a host of other things. The time is short, but I could have gone on for the week. But I will stop right here and hope and have an opportunity to, to finish up later. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now we're going to do the questions and answers uh, pretty quickly. It's already past 8 o'clock, and we intend to be out of here before 9, inshallah. Now, uh, Mr. Kurang, let's start with you. OIC has stalled for a long time. In your first 100 days, what will you do about OIC? We are promised roads, we are promised hotels, we are promised economic prosperity. We were told, actually, that the OIC funds were already here more than a year ago, but the roads are still to be done. If we call you Your Excellency, Alaji Mamadi Kurang of Number One Marina Parade, what will you do about OIC? Thank you. Um, I think the OIC <laughs> is a typical problem of the the borough government, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of promise. We heard about billions coming. Uh, we haven't seen anything. We heard about job creation, no jobs created yet. We heard about uh, expensive highways costing $1 million every kilometer. We are yet to see. So far, we still have potholes. I think what I would do, you know, in the first 100 days for the OIC, obviously, if you want to change something, you have to analyze it. To, and to analyze, you have to investigate. We need to know what happened to, what happened, what actually happened. Because we know there was a head of OIC that has been taken away. We know that people are being paid very high salaries. But for the Gambian, still now, nothing has happened. The OIC is not just about a conference. These international conferences are opportunities for economic growth. Because together with the investment that comes in, in building roads and so on, job creation comes in, and then development also comes in. So what I would do, I would still believe that we can hold a conference. I think that a country that takes in maybe 100, 200,000 tourists should have no problem taking in you know, 50 or so heads of states and bringing them in. I think the people, the government promotes, and people within the government put a lot of hype on this project so that money chopping can happen, right? As an accountant, I would do an investigation. I would not call a commission because commissions, we know, chop money is what commissions do and then nothing comes out of them. I think you can hold a simple financial investigation, not within 100 days, but within two weeks. You'll be able to tell people what happened to the money. Thank Every you. accountant knows that. And then from there on, we will take it right from there. We, will, we would like to go with the project still. Mr. Deng, uh, in your first 100 days, what will you do regarding the draft constitution that failed? The constitution that so much money was spent on, so much consultation was done with Gambians at home, in the diaspora, institutions, heads of departments, villagers, alcalos, everybody has participated in that process. Yet, the new constitution never came into force. What will you do if you become president regarding that? I would... Uh pick up the issues that uh, brought about the setback, because I think, uh, if I can uh, totally recall, you know, it was some uh, uh, few clause in the, in the Constitution that certain people reacted to, you know, regarding the, the Muslim world and the Christian world, you know, which constitute, you know, uh, a majority of the, of the population. You know, I think the Muslims were against secularism, you know, and the Christians were afraid of Sharia, you know, which I think uh, if the commission engaged the scholars in both religions, I think they would have come to terms. So, you know, what I will do is I will, uh, I will engage, you know, the population back because the country needs a book, you know, to rely on, you know, and the country without a constitution, I think it's, 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 it's dangerous. So my first 100 days, I will uh, use a restorative approach you know, whereby I will, I will involve 
you know, the, uh, the, 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 the people who are, you know, reacting to this, to this clause in the, in, the, in the Constitution, you know, so that we can have a common ground, you know, that we all know that it's, it's a book, you know, that answers to each and every one of us our needs, because it's something that we all contributed towards being put together, and there's a lot of money that has been invested in it. You know, so I think uh, it's, it's something that if we, you know, are matured enough, you know, you'll be able to have, uh, have a, you know, a proper book, you know. Do, 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 do I hear you say you will implement it as it is, if you are president? Actually, or you'll encourage I will, its implementation? I will, I, will, I will engage, you know, the issues that are, you know, hindering it from being implemented, you know, and... I don't uh, think the issue of secularism is in fact the issue. Actually, uh, it, it was it's, a talking point. It's, but it's, I don't think it's actually, it's, it's one of the issues because I personally, I uh, met a group of people, you know, who form a group, you know, ready, you know, to go against, you know, the constitution in because, Parliament because they think, you know, they think uh, uh, that, that, that the constitution, you know, will come to, you know, promote homosexuality and, you know. So at the end of the day, uh, it's 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 uh, it's it's a conflict in it, that. So, yeah. I I think the reason the draft constitution failed is the time limit, for example. That's one of the issues. And, and I think those are the main issues why it failed. Actually, they are quite the retroactivity number. also of term, mm -hmm. the time limits. So there are key things that I feel, mm. if they were doctored, it would have passed. Actually, regarding the term limits, this has something to do with the politicians. But religion, but religion also have a, a major role to play because at the end of the day, you know, when the constitution gets into parliament before it's passed on, it, it has to be blessed by the Gambian people because it's something for the Gambians, you know, not just for the parliamentarians. So it's, it's, it's chaotic. You know, I think everybody has to accept if the, if, if, if the constitution has to be adopted, it has to be on everyone's will who is a Gambian. We all willingly have to go to the Constitution knowing that it's going to be favorable to everyone. So we need to sit back on the drawing board to re-engage and involve the right people, you know, so that we can, we, we can get to terms, both politicians and the religious aspect. So, uh, Mr. Fati, we come to you now. As it stands today, NPP and APRC have formed an alliance. Some people have been upset about it. Some people are excited about it. Some people, in fact, feel it's the right thing to do. We need to reconcile ourselves and become one Gambia, one people, one nation, and to the Gambia ever through. But what do you think about this as a presidential aspirant? Would you have done this or not, and why? Uh, Mr. Drame, uh, that's a good question. Uh, like, uh, I've seen it on social media. It's all over. People are complaining about it. Uh, but to my own perspective, I believe uh, the right reparation should, should have happened. At least uh, reconciliation is something that uh, it needs to be out there. But uh, the problem we had is even with the TRRC. The rightful sensitization, civic education was not done uh, to bring people closer to each other. You know, we, they were going on with the TRRC and everything, but the right civic education was not done. And NPP and APRC coming together, uh, if you look at it, people will be a little bit offended because, you know, families have suffered and lots of things have happened in this country. But if you look at it deeply, deeply too, it was not the APRC as a party. It was the government, the, the, the then government, who did all, the, all those atrocities. But what I believe is one thing we should do as a country is let's come together as one people. Let's forget about what happened before. It's going to be very, very hard, but that's the rightful thing to do. If we want to develop as a nation, we need to come together. Rwanda have done it. Other countries have done it. And I believe we, the Gambians, can do it too. If we keep on having these grudges among ourselves, hatred among ourselves, it's just going to increase uh, many times it's not gonna help the country so if you want to work as one people we need to come together forget about all those things that have happened but at least the rightful the right reconciliation should have happened at least 
by the help of artists and other people. So you agree NPP and APRC should be together for one Gambia for unity, right? Uh, yes, no? No, the whole country should come together. Not only APRC and NPP coming together. I'm so talking you see of nothing the wrong with their coming together? Yeah, it's... Uh, in terms of politics, people might think that it's, it's bad and things like that, but... No, what do you think? You, no, what, what, you think? what I think is it's necessary for all the country to uh, for all the parties to come together is very very important it's going to be very very hard but for people to come it's not only about party it's okay. about our people okay. we have things in heart that is disturbing us we need to come together and throw that away and look at the interests of the country and develop the nation that is the most important thing thank you thank you mr party uh, mr jase we're coming to you and uh, as a security expert i'm going to be blunt and straightforward with this our men in uniform are unhappy the Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces have never stepped a foot in a military installation in this country in more than four years. They are not happy. If you become Commander-in-Chief, how do you make the men in uniform happy? Um, first of all, I would like to address the feeling of the current president to visit military ins and security installations in the country. It clearly shows that he is clueless about his role as president of the Republic of the Gambia. As the Constitution says, his role is to protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Gambia. And if he doesn't take the time to go and see the men and women who are engaged in this task, then he clearly doesn't have any interest in his job. Number two, um, once you reform the, the security services, you will realize that Gambia has what is needed in order to protect and secure ourselves. Um, we are part of a, a connection of security within the sub-region. And uh, it is important that we have strong security in the Gambia because a chain will break at its weakest point. Gambia should not be allowed to have weak security. It is not to Senegal's interest. It is not to the South region's interest. And if Mr. Barrow is behaving in a manner that is making our security services unhappy, we become less secured. The South region becomes less secured. This is what we must understand. And uh, I have worked with these men and women. I have interacted with them um, in different le at different levels. And I know the capability is there. For instance, when I was given the job to formulate in, uh, internal policies for the immigration department and Gambia police force, I came to the realization that when I came in 1999 to join the Gambia police force, I was the only one with a bachelor's degree in the entire force. When I met this group of men and women from the Gambia police force and the Gambia immigration department, each and every one of them has a bachelor's degree. This was tremendous, tremendous development. And uh, when I interacted with them, when I worked with them, I realized the tremendous um, skill, I mean, uh, potential that they have that the nation must take advantage of, give them the right tools to work with, give them the right environment to work with, and they will have the job done. At this point in time, we should not have had any member of ECOMIC being in the Gambia. You see, one thing that gave me insider's information is that in 2016, when Mr. Jami refused to leave, ECOWAS was tasked, as we all know, with the responsibility of negotiating with him or coming up with a strategy to make him leave. That task was placed at the hands of uh, President Mahama of Ghana. Mahama of Ghana turned to a, a security firm here in the United States for direction. The firm called me and put me part of the team to create the strategy of which to remove President Jame. During those discussions, I came to the realization that all of those people that were there were very, very concerned that if we allow economic to come in with too many of Senegalese soldiers, Gambia would see it as some kind of an occupation. And it would also, whether we accept it or not, create a backdoor entry for Senegal into our, into our sovereignty. As it stands today, this economic is looking more and more like a Senegalese invasion marginalizing, sorry, not a Senegalese invasion, but a Senegalese occupation. Um, when, Mr. when President Barrow came to Gambia on a Senegalese military plane, they may not have understood what that meant. That meant Senegal was going to install our president. I would have preferred Mr. Barrow to come back to Gambia on a Gambian bicycle than fly in a Senegalese military airplane. We are a sovereign nation. We are not anti-Senegalese, but we are a sovereign nation with the duty to protect our turf. 
the God-given territory that we have that is called Gambia. Protecting Gambia and loving Gambia is not hating anybody, but we have to have a mutual respect for each other's uh, sovereignty that, that and uh, behave in a manner that would not make any party, whether in Senegal or in Gambia, uncomfortable about the presence of other other uh, security forces on our soil. You, now it takes me, but when I look at what is happening, I realize what would the concern of so many of the security people that were on the team that I work with to come up with that uh, strategy. Part of what I was asked to do was to look for ways in which uh, they would exhaust all other means uh, before military action. Thank, thank I, you, I, I suggested to them that they should include the King of Morocco and the President of Guinea Conakry because I had well, Mr. Jami refer to these two as his in-laws and I thought that they would be very persuasive if they were included in the negotiations to ask Mr. Jame to leave. And it all turned out well until Mr. Barrow left the Gambia. That was when we begin to lose part of our sovereignty and it will continue to do so until we get Mr. Barrow out. Unfortunately, our men and women in uniform will remain unhappy until there's a change in government. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, guys, I, I tend to give him a little bit more time because he's not present with us physically as well. And of course, when he talks in his area of expertise, it makes sense that we could all pick up on some of the vibes he's sending. Ablai, we want to finish with our journalists. Let's give you another 15 minutes for questions, yes. and then we'll try to wrap up now and, and leave. Yes. Quick, quick, and no pregnant questions. One question and direct it specifically to a person. Please. Is it really? Yes. Is that your name? Yes. <laughs> well, her mic, her mic, Adama. Uh, yes. My question is drawn from the fourth session, and it's directed to Mr. Kurang. You have talked about debt and debt management in your previous deliberation. So the country is said to owe 77.4 billion. I stand to be corrected. With your knowledge of debt management, how do you intend to tackle that if you are elected come 4 December? Thank you. Yeah, um, the, 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 the interesting thing about sovereign debt is sometimes even governments can under-declare because we know about off-balance sheet as accountants. There are some debts that may not appear in the books. So what is being said around now is what is in the box. How to deal with the debt situation? Well, I did make mention of that. Uh, our president goes around the country and said, I have built more roads and more bridges than Jawara and, uh, and Yaya. Uh, but he never said, I've borrowed more money, or I am borrowing more money than each of them, you know, even though they have stayed for 30 years and 20 years. So there are two sides of a coin. He is spending and spending and spending. Obviously, we know the previous government was also spending. The, 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 the APRC government on the IAEA was also spending. How do you tackle it? You have to contain spending. We have uh, what we call discretionary and non-discretionary. There are certain expenditures you must do. You have to buy medicine for the doctors, right, for the hospitals, and you have to pay the doctors and the nurses and the teachers. They have to be done. But we know that there are so many expenses within the budget. People always make fun about the president's personal budget, for example. How do I talk? I would not be spending that amount of money that the president is spending on fish money. That's one. But that's just an example. This country spends so much on traveling, for example, also. There is business class that has been going on since 2017. You will see a ticket for a minister costing you $100,000. I think that is not necessary. Those are the examples. I'm just giving you examples, but there are so many examples. I gave traveling within the country here of how much fuel they use. New cars every day, nothing is being driven. We thought Yaya Jame left about 1,000 vehicles. It seems that Barrow is still buying vehicles. What for? So we know there is discretionary expenditure. That is what we call the expenditure side. We need to boost up the income, which is the other side, in order to reduce the debts. Apart from you know, reducing expenditure, you need to look for alternatives, the efficiency. The Gambia is a tax economy. So most of our income come from taxes, right? 
Well, without adding anything, I also say I'm the only tax expert among all the con contestants for these presidential candidates. So what, what am I going to do? I understand the tax system. You can reduce taxes if you efficiently collect them. They said the Gambia collects maybe about what? A billion or 12 billion or something every, a billion dollars or so every month in terms of uh, taxes. Well, it's not a lot of money. You can still in increase the amount of tax you collect if you increase the efficiency of your information. The Gambia, the Gambia government cannot even tell you how many people are eligible to pay taxes, how many citizens are there, how many non-citizens are there. So we tell you in accounting, if you don't have your info information, they say it's more powerful than the money. If you don't get your information right, as an accountant and economics, I survive on information. If you get the information within the government correct, if you are able to register each and every citizen, one million people, two million, three million people, it's no big deal. They are, China has 1.2 billion people and they know every citizen, not only your name and your surname and where you live, they also know what you do every day. That may be too much, isn't it? But one billion people, one, two million, three million people, we should get our statistics correct. There is no accounting you can do properly if you don't get your statistics. So I am going to increase the efficiency of the information that the government receives and processes and use to run the country. When we increase the efficiency of the information, we will be able to increase. You saw the JANE Commission. If you saw the JANE Commission, you saw there is so many incomes, so many revenue that the government lost in so many opportunities. They talk about the parastatals here. They are being badly run, my friend. The GPA, the GAMTEL, they are big money losers because they are backed by the taxpayer. If they are losing money, the taxpayer is losing money. The income is going down. If you increase the efficiency of this, this institution. In the Jawara government, they try to come up with what they call performance contracts, where the, 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 the parastatals will report to the government based on performance indicators. That was just a starting step. Thank you, sir. However, in this new government, right, mm -hmm. if we are elected into power Thank in you. December, we will increase information efficiency, increase taxes, and reduce expenditure and balance the budget. Thank you, thank you. Next okay. journalist, now, next question. Now, now, before I give, um, let me ask my question. Um, to who? I will still go back to Kura. Um, so much is being said about economic reform, direct forest investors to boost our economy. But we forget about the, what will all of this, what will all of will say, Bena Dom Sikir from Pudrongoni Wajuram. That's the NAWEC. Our energy sector has been not, not been mentioned in terms of boosting our economy. And I expect direct foreign investors cannot invest in a country which is not fully reliable in terms of energy. Mr. Kurang, if you voted in, of, in your office come December 5th, what are your plans within your first 100 days in terms of, you know, you know, boost, boosting in our, our, our um, uh, energy sector. Right. I, I think the problem of NAWEC is very obvious. Investigations have been conducted. NAWEC is owing millions and millions and millions of dollars. There was something that was reported in the JANE Commission that NAWEC almost brought down the Gambia's banking system. About $300 million, the NAWEC could not pay. The banks were almost going bust. The central bank had to come in to guarantee NAWEC. Well, who is central bank? It's you. Your tax money was used to bail out NAWEC. So NAWEC is such a danger, not only in terms of electricity, but in terms of the financial viability of this country. The only solution with NAWEC is to reform it and to reform to encourage alternative sources of energy. So many Gambians are already using solar energy. A small country like this, wind power, solar energy, there is too much sunlight in this country. Alternative sources of energy would make the people independent of NAWEC, will streamline the demand that NAWEC is facing. Right now, there is a ship in the river Gambia that called car power that is basically the lifeline for NAWEC. So we are exporting energy from another country at this moment whether you like it or not, that's the fact. 
So unless you try to reform the country where you have alternative energy, there are three things or four things that go together in this country that must be simultaneously solved. The electricity, the road and the communication network, and the water system. Every village in this country must be supplied with electricity and water and must be supplied with an efficient, now, elect, an efficient energy and water system. You cannot solve the problem of NAWEC by tinkling and dismissing managing directors. It is never a problem. Gambians like to blame the managing director. I'm telling you the problem in NAWEC is bigger than any managing director, bigger than any board. It's a sovereign problem. It is for the government to take the bull by the horn, to realize that the debt do you know that the debt, according to the German Commission, are, that are was incurred... Are you advocating for NAWEC to be privatized? Well, what do you think about that? It has happened in so many countries, but if you are going to privatize it, you must be careful because privatization has taken place here before and it only ended up making somebody rich. And in the end, when they realized that he was stealing money in Jawara's time, they tried to detain him and so, and then he jumped, he hired a helicopter and left. Do you know that story? It happened here. So, I am telling you that you can privatize, but people say in many countries, if you want to privatize NAWEC, you have to break it down. Distribution and power generation are two different things. And then there are other aspects of NAWEC that you can. So, yes, it can be privatized, but you must know which aspect to privatize, and you must be very careful with it. Thank you. Thank so, you. Okay. Uh, so another question. One, one question to Mr. Jase, please. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Jase. Uh, when we talk about development, we also talk about infrastructure. Uh, what plan are you trying to put in terms of uh, infrastructure development, considering the physically um, challenged um, men and women in the country? All right. Once again, if the only tool you can use is a hammer, you tend to see everything as a nail. We have a military asset that is sitting there, starting from Se with Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria, coming to the United States, in Europe, all of these nations utilize their military assets by creating an army corps of engineers. This army corps of engineers are responsible for building the secondary roads, um, some of the bridges within the rural areas, the health centers, and a host of other infrastructural development that they can do locally without interfering with the private sector. I must make that clear before Mr. Kurang, the economist, jump on this case. I will preserve the private sector, um, but I will utilize the military, the military asset, train them to become electrical engineers, to become construction equipment operators, to become engineers aides, to become elect, uh, construction carpenters, and they host all the training that they can do. And whilst they are serving, they will be doing this. They will be contributing towards infrastructural development within the country. And when they are done serving, they can use those skills to actually start a business. And uh, part of my plan is once you have served in the military, acquired uh, a certain type of skill, when you are honorably discharged and you form a company, the Gambia government will guarantee all former service personnel who are engaged in, skill, in these skills to have a certain percentage of government contracts. That way it will encourage more and more people to go into these fields and, and, become, and become skillful. When you look at a country like the United States and all these beautiful buildings, they are not by, built by people who've been to the university. Maybe the only person that went to the university was the person who drew the plan. The people who execute the plan are highly skilled people who actually in 95% of the case served in the US military. They come out as skilled workers, continue to contribute towards national development. This is what we must do, use the military whilst they are in active service and still continue to use them once they retire from the military. Infrastructural development would be two phase. One, the secondary part would be under the military with the, with the under the, the part that deals with uh, structural development, uh, infrastructural development, the Army Corps of Engineers. The other part would be the private sector that, uh, of course, continues to employ a lot of people, and uh, we don't want to interrupt that as well. But they will be working together to, to serve the government people. This is the best way to move forward, because we must understand that we don't have the money to pay contractors to do all of this. For instance, all of the feeder roads, 
in the country it could have been given to the military. How do we do this? We Once we train the military, we bring back what is known as the public works department. Each region will have its own regional public works department that will be made up of civilians that work under the governor's office, but they will also have a military, military attach, atta attachment that would also be engineers that would work for developing infrastructure, infrastructure within the region. Once every region is has the development that it needs, the nation develops as a whole. This will definitely bring economic growth. It will make life a lot easier in every aspect for every Gambian. I will say it again. Let us begin to utilize our military asset instead of just letting them sit there and, and, and not being active in any way, shape, or form. Once we come up with these ideas of creating this Army Corps of Engineers, you'll be surprised how many of our development partners will be willing to come forward to help us set it up and actually give us the equipment that we need as a start. And also we have so many people within the private sector, such as staff construction and GIGO construction and all these other construction uh, companies that actually have people who have the skills that could partner with the military and start training them uh, in the use of this equipment and, uh, and some of these construction techniques so that they will become more and more productive, the nation will benefit, they'll benefit, and we will be on our, on our road to development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, can we now do just two questions, uh, and then we'll end this, please. Abdullah, you decide about two questions. Yes, so um, I have two questions for Mr. Kura, and one question for Kitab and, and Jeng. Hey, sir. Prioritize. <laughs> let's, do, let's use one-to-one, -one, please. Okay, it's I almost think I, nine o'clock. We have let to me, leave. Let me direct my questions to Mr. Kura. Um, you talk about creating 500,000 jobs, right? And I want to ask, how are you going to create these jobs? And what are the key and major potential job creation means and areas in the Gambia that you're going to tap in? Thank you. Did you say you were going to create 500,000 jobs? No, I, I, I didn't say that. I did I, say okay. that we are going to mobilize 500,000 young people. All right? And the purpose of that was not right initially as a job creation means. To create jobs in that sense, to see it as job creation, is just to say, to put them out there and give them salary. No. First of all, what is the problem of the country? We feel that the country has to be built. So what change is saying, if you want to build a country, you need a core, a skill core, skill core, meaning a group of people, young people in the country who have the skills. Now, there is a symbiotic relationship that is working here, right? We want to build our roads. What is, look, you have to look at what is happening right now. Who is building the roads? They are foreign companies. You want to build the bridges. Which, which bridge is build, being built by a Gambian company? They don't have the skills. You have to bring people from outside to build the skills, to build the bridges. The Singapore army, for example, right? is able to mobilize young people that can build a bridge over the Singapore River in 24 days. So they have so many bridges on the Singapore River. Built by who? Singaporeans. So to have the money, what the, our people have been saying to us since 1965 to 1994 to 2016, Ndada Bantale, Ngakodonat, Demneng Halis People were out there celebrating $1 billion coming. But that is not the theory for development that has developed any country in this world. Tell me one country in this world that has developed just like that, with foreign money, without domestic skills. So we are saying is that development has to be internally generated. Get your people prepared. Now, when you get them prepared, the jobs will create themselves. Because what I am saying is I talk about relevance education. If you mobilize 500,000 young people, you are not going to ask them to become political science, sociology, or economics. No. Hand skills, my brother. Hand skills. Hand skills. We need engineers. How many people are, in, are graduating from University of the Gambia with civil engineering degree, or electronics engineering, or medicine? How many? Few, if any. So there is something that is lacking. Taiwanese and the Singaporeans build their country with technical skills, so we need technical education. Only the government can mobilize that. 
All the private institutions, including my own institution, could only limit ourselves to those skills that do not require so much investment. Technical skills require investment. So there is a process that is taking place. Where will they work? Now, my key job point, if I am to answer your question, is housing, housing, housing. Thank you, thank you. Housing, 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 yes, housing. Yes, because 100,000 houses we mentioned, sir, 100,000 houses, those boys and girls that are going to build those houses will buy those houses. The wealth will be, it's a cycle that you create wealth with. They build a house, you pay them for the labor. They buy the house, they bring their parents to stay there. They live in the house. That is how you build every country. Thank you. We don't need a new formula. Thank you. The formula is there. Last question. Who's doing the last question? Last question. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Mr. Jassi. Um, Mr. Jassi, are you with us? Yes. Okay, yes, quickly. Um, over the years, we've seen many young Gambian ladies have been trafficked to the Middle East and sold as domestic slaves. And according to the U.S. Department of State 2021 um, Trafficking in Persons report, Gambia is ranked tier number two, meaning we've not been doing enough to eliminate this, I mean, trafficking in person. Um, what and how can you address this problem in your first 100 days? All right, thank you very much. To, to do that, <clears throat> we have to strengthen the immigration department. And to strengthen them, we have to take away some of their responsibilities and further focus them on enforcement. Enforcement is what is lacking. And uh, again, we'll have to come back to the issue of corruption. There are times when officials who are paid to protect these people actually receive bribes and look the other way. And these things happen. I have been within the international community in the Gambia, and one of the greatest concern uh, for most of the embassies from especially the Western countries is that the government government is not serious about prosecuting people engaged in human trafficking. And that this is the greatest disappointment uh, that they have of the borough government, which is also part of the failed security sector reforms. My reform package on that is this. When it, I will create a new department on the interior called the Passport and Civil Registration Directorate. I will remove passport issuance, um, aliens cards, and all these other documents away from the immigration department and give it to a new department that would be the issuing agency. The immigration department will only be the enforcement agency. That way, we are freeing up a lot of extra officers in order to engage in enforcement. And, but before you send them out, you have to make sure they understand they, they are given the training. And in giving them the training, you need to make them understand the effect that that has on humanity when you sit back and allow human trafficking to, trafficking to continue. Once they grasp that, uh, that, that understanding, they begin to use their powers that are given to them to do their job to do it better. Again, we will come to the point, there is a failure in enforcement. We have all the laws, we have all everything that we need in place in order to do this, but we must say that it is unfortunate that the borough government do not seem to have the political will to do anything remotely related to reforming our security. And as a result, we continue to suffer. Our women are being sold into slavery now. The children are dying in the seas. Uh, the, 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 the young women are being raped and murdered. Uh, homes are being broken into. Traffic is a mess. Nobody can go anywhere on time. There is a host of things that are tied to security sector reforms. And that is why I keep saying we need to go back and do that. You need a president who understands the importance of security sector reforms. And I am that candidate. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Jase, and thank you, uh, media persons here. Mr. Kitabu will give you three minutes for closing statements. You may speak in Mandinka, Manjago, Jola, Sarahule, any language you so choose to speak, but the closing statement must be limited to three minutes, and uh, it must be uh, all encompassing, and you say your final goodbye. Uh, I wouldn't do justice if I don't uh, address uh, one sector that is my own sector because I'm, I'm from the arts and culture uh, sector. Uh, because uh, if you look at things, uh, that sector is the, the creative industry is booming right now, but uh, actually, uh, our ministry totally forget about us. 
and it's something that we will address if we are elected into office. Because today, uh, we have lots of creative artists in the Gambia, and that is going to uh, help the youth uh, to, to acquire jobs, because today you have uh, arts generally, you have artists, you have uh, actors, you have actresses, you have comedians, uh, the industry is big. But it's even very, very hard uh, to uh, monetize your own YouTube platform in the Gambia here. All those things need to be addressed. You look at it, even the tourism and culture now, culture is even abandoned. So that is something that uh, it's a problem. And Gambia needs to sell its culture outside. So uh, we believe uh, if PDP is elected into office, we look up to, uh, we look into that area too. It's very, very important. And uh, uh, my last words are, mbe mo beten to la menube jang mba fula la baraka bake ka futa jang ka si kal la moy aku mata bakel ni dem politiko ti politiko manke ka jafiroti a manke nendirti a manke ka bula nyola politiko mu ngineti yemen soto moli yew foye wala ku mata ka nyonen ka bula nyola because bi nyim banko mu mbele tati mo kilin tanteng ndu nata da nyato ndu leta da nyato na muruta ko mo faran tolle mu auto katara tele to katara facebook auto ka bula nyola at the end albe bulo di la nyola ka fo nyoy ko ha Politiko lemu barimbi mu Gambia dini keli nati wata ra aliyemu molu mu jamaa be banda aliyemu nukuyandi wamu kuleti mea longo is a problem di kujia halisi all of it di ten tu nyep di yo salamu kaula kwa di ten tu nyep abe keli di jerem nyep di wa nyep ne dal begne ntorop pruta hofi wa leng luni nani amal has candidates I thank you all Allah baraka ba kwenye mu comedy and all this so I still do comedy so Allah baraka ba Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Kuran, three minutes. Um, I, uh, an area that has eluded us uh, during this debate is health care. So you may touch on that if you have any plans for the health sector. Why are our women dying when giving life? Why is it that when you have minor ailments, you don't get treatment? That's an area that is of concern. So maybe the remainder of you should also touch on those areas. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Drame. Memo be tentula, memo be jaila, mange gerim nyip. Right, for all the listeners, I'm very pleased. If I said anything, suvegene wahna alohamne, you know, offend anybody, right, I'm very sorry about it. Gambia is facing election, which is critical. 2021 December is very critical for all of us. Molko, mo mbelo la siyatale. But more siyata nyawa nyawa more teke no la kilinti. Tuwa wol kake nyama easy tale. Politician no politician sina no janna ayafoko ala fainye. Mbe airport all lo lai. Ala fainye. Mbala silo lbe da dala. Ala fainye mbe nyimbe gal. Ndefe omang important. Chiman luke na am sohla moe gwa ji lala defon. Bala mo la tere umi. That is what is important. Secondly, as we are facing it, this is not an election about the past. Among the country, we are going to be able to compensate Lala because of something else. It's about Banco Bita Mintole for the next 10 years. Nyanta Banco Dila Jumale la Meya Longo, Ninge la Ta Ila Jar Jarol Jibe, Ayitani Mola Lako is a Banco Sambanole for the next 10 years. Kuma jama le fota kabrin 2016. But the more man tara karte fa ikam patio e. Unko ngaje le president kala patio bay le four man kijang. President kala patio sindi la red card dia la four man kijang. Ote fo e karte fa e patio le ban fo ya fa e president e. E karte fa e president e. 2021 is a very critical decision. More ka fo ko ah alnga badi mfasak. Oman ke misil me ati de Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam abota Quraysh le atata Madina amurta nang Quraysh abadi ngil me ya long ko iman tara tonya taman di kang ayek kanate sa intebe me mfola bangko mo lenka ole for na friends ole ni ta ko ikam mo le normal katun ko inte musiol di te lafdi te ayo damman ne ati ne yen normal sufeke ne yang mato pandik nyobo ka head gacha rek mo la chefeka paski yagi topa yon bo ham ne Rasul da andu ta Rasul. Jisnen kofi, not only in the Gambia, jisnen kofu neka. 
So it is very important bahna important na pour nit yi ñu xol candidate bu nega lan moy jar jaram man ma ngi laaj te rew mi because feel na ne what is been happening since 2016 même be ke kan ka bin 2016 makati bayo wala be ke rim politico tambitale ko nga experience so tole na ne ni man sa ku ndaman do ko ke isa fo ko mbulo nota je comme account no le te andu nga kisi kisi rokel ñim banko ko do lamu problème wot andu president ñanta kala je me yalon ko ate nene no la auto gambian call aga nañ fo xamne place bo xamne ñep war nañu xol ori baro muntuma le soku ta mol ma ñoo suuté mol ya ñoo suuté le say ndé mol men ka kuma fula fo anin kuma killing wo manke killinti Time, I feel I'm consistent luma wa hon demba mom la ne ka di wax tay mom la ne ka di wax elek assalamu alaikum thank you thank you thank you so much mr jeng um lima def rek moy ma commencer la gërem yow haruna ak sa team bi you know pour platform bi nga create ni pour jox gambian ci you know pour ñu ubbi sen bot ba pare ubbi sen nopa ñu tatan ba pare deglu pour xol di nga xamanteni ñom ñoo laaj rew mi naka lañ ñena gado fan lañ ñena yobu bu ñen fa agge naka lañ ñen fa baye té dafa na platform bi ñu nepp nangu nañ né platform yi euh xam xam la ak platform la bo xamanteni kep ku tok fi tay di ñun panelist yi yépp dafa na buñ ci jangé wut kon amna amna lu lu dess ci ñun né ko xamné rew daf la ñor bu dé deglu nga li fi rocc ci xam xam dafa na bu dé amone nga sikki sak ci djublu way bu dé ka bi di djublu dafa na fum nek ni xel dina commencer dal né bo xolé ñu fi tok ñep you know ay ndaw lañ you know ba pare tamit kilifa bokku suñ biir né so xolé dé ka ay ndaw ak ay kilifa bu ñéké bénn ñom ñoo dé mëna yobu réew waaw nek njitum réew nak euh doon na mbir mo xamanteni mbir mu jafé la legui ñu ngi saku ñaan ci ñi nga xamanteni ñom ñoy audience yi kilifa diiné kilifa aaday né rew mi tollu na ci level bo xamanteni soxla na ñaan naka nonu itam ñu demonstrate responsibility né election du xëccu waaw né lepp lu ñu xëccu fi yalla daf ko joxé ba paré waaw election lan la kep ku nek ci ñun jog samp sen dënd laaj rew mi ñi nga xamanteni ñom lako yalla toxal sen xol yi ñu jël ko jox lako né yalla ki fa tok tan nako be paré so ñu ngi ñaan election bi ñu and ci ak sago ñu and ci ak dal ñu xamné rew mi ñoko bok gannaaw election ñun ñoy dajé ci jakay ñoy dajé ci ciodji gannaaw election ñoy dajé ci takay ñoy dajé ci ngenté yi gannaaw election ñoy dajé ci marseille gannaaw election ñoy menté dom ñoy sey ñun neen suñ biir motax lepp lu ci way di wax nako sétat lepp lu ci way di def nako sétat this is not a competition way li synergy la way tay bo xolé li euh cheikh naka jassé wax euh kitabu lum wax suma mbokk mi kurom lum wax ak lepp luñ fi tek dafa na xam xam bu leer la te dafa na li sax tontuna ñi nga xamne ñom ñoo doon wax ne ñun dañ jog rek pour ut tour dafa na li fi rot tay euh affaire bi leer na man di li de musuma ko gis in the annals of history of this country waaw di la ñaanal yow haruna you know yalla mu yok say fan you know may la wergu yaram di ñaanal panelist tamit you know yalla sam ñu aar ñu ne geew la bo xamne yombut waaw yalla mu yombalal ñu ko ci zahir ak ci batin waaw naka nonu itam euh support ci fi kep ku nek amna fo far waye gis na ne kep ku nek mu ngi and ak sago affaire bi teyna dal na té am nañ ci jangat waaw dina fa tex mo loxo té paré tamit wax nga ci mbiri health care waaw fok na suñu health care system bi lim soxla rek moy ñu gor golu ci standard ci standard ci race ba paré ñu take care of our health personnel ñu jappalé len so that's just dafa soxla leadership waaw té leadership mom dafa am lu bari lim laaj lim laaj buñ ko ko joxé rek problème lu ñoy wax ni yépp dafa dal di yomb jëre ñent jëre jëf jëre jëf jëre jëf thank you Mr Jase uh, uh, Jerejef uh, Mr Drame uh, bu garanti ka wax ci healthcare bi uh, ba pare ma 
so the teach um again uh so set law sin healthcare system bi um lañu wax ne sin do xale yu jigen yu nge ñaka sen bakkan ci l'hôpital yi ci something lo xamne li ni dafa normal comme jourdon li ni xew moy ne duñ de am primary care services primary health care services mo du de am hospital si dañ ko ngeste the workload dafa heavy so fuñ jaar wañi workload bi ci hospital si ak health care centers yi su ko defé ñi nga xamne ñi seen li leen li leen fever bi leen dal mën nañ ko fajj te du jaar ñu dem l'hôpital le moy lool moy primary care bi legi naka lañu defaré primary care bi man egi dama del war bax ci suñu militaire bi because ci militaire bi dañu create an army core of health technicians these health technicians they no use uh, mobile health units ñom ñoy dawal health unit bi dugal ko ci villages dugal ko in every corner of the country di joxe primary health care services lo xamna li ni ñom mënuñ ko fajj dinañ ko refaire to the next level which is the secondary uh, health care bobu mom mën nañ ko ebal ci health centers yi health centers yi su dé mën nañ ko fajj dinañ ko ebal to the next level which is the tertiary health care where you have the hospitals at that level nak dañ fofu la government bi wara partnership with the private sector ñi nga xamné ñom ño amé tuntu wayu es yi nga xamné mom lañu jëfëndé ko ci health care dëkk yu melni america nguur gi momul hospital yi hospital bi nit ñe ko mom investors ñe ko mom li nga xamné li ni yow so ki nga xamné mu ngi joggé gambia di dem di fay senegal pour scan su amé machine bu ko scan gambia mu fay moko gënal muy pay pay pass di dem ki nga xamné mom mo machine bo government bi mën nako indi partner ak mom mu tok gambia nga xamné ku so la scan bi government bi na def tuti yo nga def li ci dess ñu fay ko nga am sa scan ñu mën la fajj health care service bi dafa am three levels primary care primary health care services secondary health care services and tertiary so what primary bi bi nga xamne mo gëna am solo dañ ko jël jébal ko ci loxo militaire bi nga xamne dañ leena train as um, registered nurses health technicians and from there you develop them you become doctors nga xamne they can continue to serve even after they are out of the military because once again my experience in united states most of doctors in ibc they worked in the in, in the in the us military lolu moy li nga xamne dama continuer di advocate utilizing our military asset in every aspect of development in the country it will work ganaw lolu mr driver man lay sante de la gërem ci this brilliant idea bi nga indi and man sante na yalla ne i have made history because of such efforts i am standing here in the united states of america participating in a presidential debate that is take, taking place in the gambia live this shows when we come together to do things how more, how we can easily how we can easily change our condition from what it is now to what it can be or what we want it to be um this now the high standards you some colleagues the um register on the state i have nothing but respect for these people um the only one i knew before this was mr jeng whom i not only respect but admire and uh, recognize his contribution towards me when i was in mile 2 um leading us in prayer and uh, when i listened to this or the mr uh, uh the, the two guys i'm losing i'm losing track of the names here this is nothing but a wealth of knowledge this is nothing but a wealth of knowledge i can start here and tell you today right now as we speak the four of us can form a government there is enough knowledge on the state to move this gambian nation and we should do that thank you that is probably <laughs> where where we should have begun to in fact look at synergy since we are in coalition talks all over the country if npp and aprc could come together i do not see any reason why a fati kurang jeng and jase coalition cannot happen maybe you should be talking who knows it's a possibility we don't say no this is an interesting year it's a very interesting year and uh, this year also well you see yes. so that's also something the the center di gërem ñepp ñu fi téwé tay ak ñu tok ci kër yi di ñu sétan ci ñenenté koñi aduna yépp né liñ fass éné moy yaatal gëwi politique bi 
Gambia war nañu mëna am ñuy mëna waxtaan ñu ni neen politique waru ta nek mbiri xaliss ki am rek mo mëna dem di gisante ak ñep dafa wara nek yafi waxtaan ku nek dañ ñu wara wax leg lu leer fan nga tollu suñu rew mbe buñu la ko denke foko jëmi fok lolu leer li motax ñu ubi geew bi ni ku bëgga rew mi nak té man ko yoré koku xaliss waru ta tax li tax mu délo ganaaw si mëna yoré rew motax laajuñ fi kenn dërëm pour ngeen ñu waye ñu né ngeen waxtaana gambia ni ñu fi nekk ak ñu fi nekkut ñu leen xamuton xam leen xamé leen rañé leen fo leen jaar ci rew ñu xamné kat ki mu ngi ni amna ñuy bind ci facebook bu té di wax né ah man ki dé nawna ko amna suma carte yeen xeñ ñi ci sangu leen lool waye ni ñang ko waxtaané rew li moko doxal fok ñu waxanté dégg fok ñu tété wanté ñu jappanté loxo ñun yépp ñu bokk bénn djublu way bénn gambia la mënu ñoo am ñaari gambia di leen jaajëfal bu baax kontan nañ torop di wax nak pour mu lèr essa mbay fall ak nitam ñi bind nañ leen laaj leen ñen ñu ñëw ñu né paré nguñ dafa am yeneen ñu ñoo def ngemba gi dal fok na lañoo tak mu gëna diggër buñ paré xej ñen nañ ñu wuyus Dr Amadou Kanté itam wo nañ ko waxtaan nañoo ko mom momet mu né dal affaire ci daf ko xala souf paré wu bu paré nañu woy li tax may wax li pour mu lèr rek bu élégué bu ñu xamné bañ kën gënaaw waye nak mënu ñoo forcer kën ku ñëw ku ñëwul nak ya man ta ñëw wala ya bagu la ñëw bi ci mëna doon rek mari sox nak nga xamné mom kenn rek moy jigéen suñu soxla nguur bi fi wo nañ ko waxtaan nañoo mom mu né mugé dox rew mi jigéen ni rew ñi ñoko soxal fum nek ni amut aajo bi pour waxtaan ju mel ni mu ci alla bi ñu bako nak ñu wata ko momit mu dem banki nak jotone nañu waxtaana mom nom nangu won na sarati dina ñew waye tay gis nañ mu bind ci facebook bi ne mom ken prepare wut ko waxuñ ko luñ doon nara waxtaane xamul sax fa la li di nek motam mu ta bok waye nak li moy birmi wona ñep ño xamne xam nañ leen papa jey fall gem nañ luñ mun pour jot ko munuñ ko jot munu ño jot ay nitam lolu motax xejna mom mu ta tewé di leen wax jeureujeuf media gambia wona ngeen sen bop 2017 ño ba tay radio ya nga yok tele ya nga yok online ya nga yok newspaper ya nga yok ñu ngay liggey xamuñ ban secte mo doxul bir gambia waye media bi doxna ñun ñoko wax ñun yeb ñu ngay def suñu liggey parce que suñu liggey ya waral lu melni li ndajay media la musu ta am bu le ndjel ben yoon ci rewi gambia te ñun media bi ñoko def bor nañu mëna am lu ñoon damo reform yu ngeena wax dal na reform yu bari media reform nak soxluñ ko parce que media bi reform na bopam be paré jërëjëf jëf so that was the debate uh, between the independent uh, presidential the presidential aspirants uh, there Um, it was a marathon one. Uh, Al Haji Mamadi Kurang. Uh, you have Abu Bakar Jeng. You also have uh, Tamsir Jasi and Kitabu Fadi. Really, what were your takeaways, uh, Prof? Well, I was interested to know. I mean, specifically speaking on the topic, um, the first hundred days in office. What were their plans? I mean, um, to be honest, also I'm, I've not seen much being said about their plans. I mean. With, with when it comes to Kitabu I think he was more or less saying that we need to assess we need to assess the situation um when it comes to Jeng also he was like we need to do a technical audit we need to assess the situation but I think I mean it's true that when you are not in the system there are certain things that you might not be privy to you need to get in the system before you know these those things but then there are basic things as an opposition if you want to come to power you just like you are a government in waiting a shadow government you should be prepared enough do the study the necessary assessment and know where exactly the fault lies So that when you come, you kickstart. When it comes to um, Kurang, I think um, he has made some, you know, some points. When it comes to, I mean, the education sector, for instance. And one thing that he pointed out, which I agree with, has to do with the lack of relevance. Our education system, he said, there are two problems: access and relevance. But for me, access and um, relevance is the most important thing here. Is our education system structured in a way that it is responding to our societal needs and problems? I think this has been the problem um, since independence. And 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 one. important way of addressing that issue is to 
reform our education system, tailor it to suit the realities of the Gambia um, at, at present. If this is not done, then we will continue to have problems. When it comes to Jase, I think he has, I mean, manifested or displayed his um, expertise in the area of security sector reform, where he made mention of something very, I mean, not, that might not be famous, that might not be popularly accepted by a lot of people, trying to separate the Civil Service Act from the Security Service Act. Because, I mean, the challenges that he mentioned when it comes to security sector reform are really there. We all know exactly these are problems that the Gambia is facing uh, when it comes to security sector reform. And one of them has to do with the issue of finance or funding. And in order to address that problem, there needs to be um, strategic, you must develop strategic ways of um, dealing with the security dilemma that we have. So I think he has already manifested his, um, you know, uh, policies in, in, that, in that regard. But then overall, overall, I will say it wasn't a bad one. Just that, I mean, some were not able to, especially Kitabo and and Jen, we are not able to specifically pinpoint on policies and programs that they really have in answering the question. All that they were saying was, I mean, 100 days is too small. Yes, we know 100 days is too small. That's three months, 10 days. But you must be able to start from somewhere. Um, so Kurang and, and Jen, and, I mean, Jase were able to, you know, rely on their expertise. Kurang coming over from that economic angle, and then Jase come from, coming from that security angle. I think we have seen that being displayed, and that really helps us. It gives us a clue as to what these people are what they mean, what they have for us as, as um, independent presidential aspirants. Uh, uh, Mams, so just to remind you, this was a joint coverage, or this is a joint coverage by the Father Network and Paradise TV. So Mams Kali of Paradise TV, PDV joined me. Uh, Mams, you were there. I mean, I mean, what were some of the things that you found uh, most interesting coming from these presidential uh, hopefuls? Yeah, one of the, thank you very much, uh, Lamy. But um, one of the most interesting things so far that I've gathered uh, from uh, this aspirant was uh, from uh, Kurang. I mean, we all know housing is a problem in this country now. The cost of rent, it's so high. And of course, he mentioned uh, of using the social security. I mean, we all know social security in other countries and in other um, uh, developed countries. I mean, they use their social security to build housing for uh, people, housing estates. Of course, the social security here, of course, the backwater housing estate and then the tangier housing estate, we've seen those. But with all those housing estates, who exactly are benefiting from those people? Is it the average uh, taxpayer or is it the average farmer? I mean, the teacher, are they able to afford those lands? Because, I mean, um, squaring it at 20 by 20 and selling it for an amount of uh, 200 to 300,000, I mean, that's how many years of those people, their, 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 their salaries? I mean, of course, when I asked him the question, I was expecting that he would answer in a way that telling me that, okay, maybe we'll bring, uh, we're, we're going to bring, uh, build a story, that, a story house that will accommodate 50, maybe uh, 50 houses, maybe a room and a palo, double room and a palo, a single room, so that it will accommodate uh, people like you see in Ghana and other countries, where they will bring, um, build a big housing. And then, of course, the, 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 the private citizens or those ones that cannot, of course, buy a, a house for themselves can go just get in there and, and of course uh, uh, rent out these uh, units and, and of course a cheaper rate because we all know i mean rent now double room and a palo goes to three thousand four thousand five thousand dollars and that is quite ridiculous looking at the um the average gambian what we earn in, uh, in a month so housing um when uh, kurang mentioned that i was quite so that, particular that, interesting that, that, but yeah, he didn't go deeply into find, um, uh, in, in giving out a solution. So we are now joined by one of the leaders, the political leaders who accepted to take part in tonight's debate, uh, Mr. Abuakari Jang. Mr. Jang, first of all, congratulations for agreeing to be part of this, uh, really. Uh, I mean, you were there, you put across your points as an independent presidential aspirant. What, what, what does tonight mean for you? Let's start from there. Actually, it was a learning curve for me, and uh, I uh, would admit that I've learned a lot from, uh, you know, what was uh, put on the ground. You know, and actually, uh, I could see uh, that Gambia, you know, if we, you know, truly, you know, work together, you know, we can we can have a great country. You know, it's not a one-man show; only one person can do it. And uh, people are good in their various ways, you know. But to me, leadership, you know, is. Uh, a quite different thing, you know. Leadership and management is two quite different things, you know. Um, management is uh, doing things right, you know, and uh, leadership is knowing what right things are, 
you know so for me what i see you know i uh, felt that you know i could i could i could rely on people you know who can do you know things right were, were you satisfied with your performance tonight actually it's not about satisfactory you know at least i've put my point across you know in my best possible ways you know and it's not just about uh, words and uh, it's about facts you know at the end of the day you know like i say you know i'm not here to uh, you know gauge my performance you know i'm here to uh, to listen more than i speak at the end of the day to put my uh, points across because it's a very short period of time you know to be able to uh, communicate you know what you want to do and how you want to do it you know and uh, i would uh, encourage you know uh, probably the next organizers you know 5 minutes is just a short period of time you know to be able to communicate you know certain well certain that is how debate goes mas you have something to ask him we have to do it quickly uh, we have other yeah. other leaders who are coming I mean, and then we'll mention that it was a learning process yeah. i mean of course we've uh, we've had different ideas from uh, di uh, different experts mm. what specifically have you learned like something new um, from your um, fellow contestants actually uh, i would say uh, i would focus on uh, the jersey you know and uh, probably we have a which is security a, a long relationship you know which uh, i uh, didn't know that you know he has such insight regarding the security yes. and uh, security being something that uh, it's, it's it's an issue in this country you know and without security i don't think nothing will work you know so uh, i i feel that you know gambia has an asset you know that if we you know give the chance you know in that sector you know he'll be able to really impact even if he's not president you know but at least you know to be able to put a minister of interior you know of his caliber you know would do this country justice you know so that's 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 exactly what i, what I picked up so know. let me ask you this question are you really really going to stand in the december election Actually, uh, I am on the path, and, and you, but uh, you are not, not sure. I am on the path. I'm sure <laughs> that I'm you will stand. stand. Exactly. Thank yes or no? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, 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 yes. yes. Mr. Yes. Jang. So, um, if you can help us bring in uh, Mr. Mr. Kurang, if you can help us bring in uh, Mr. Kurang now, uh, uh, Mr. Jang, thank you very much, and good luck with your with your campaign there. Yes. So, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jai. Um, so one of the leaders there who took part in today's debate he is saying it is not a matter of whether he is satisfied with with, with his past performance or not well it, 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 i mean he might be right in that sense because it's <laughs> at the end of the day it's for, it's for people to join it's yes. for people to see whether really he is convinced them with the points that he um that he i mean pointed out or said i mean like i said earlier on i've not seen much of um, specificities when it comes to his I mean, um, his display today when it comes to putting out his points. I mean, what we saw mostly was general, dealing with questions, you know, in general form. I mean, trying to say we need a, to do a technical audit, we must do an assessment, we must diagnose here and there. But then, specifically, what are the policies and programs do you have? And what policies and programs do you specifically have in addressing some of the myriad of challenges that Gambia is facing, especially when it comes to economy, in terms of, you know, addressing the debt problem that we have? We all agree that the Gambia since 1965 has been having debt, billions in, in dollars. I mean, this is not only, I mean, external, but also internal. How do you address this, um, this, this debt crisis? I mean, how do you address the issue of, um, you know, youth migration through the Barkway journey? I think Kitabu talked about that. But then I, 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 I wanted to say, I mean, we're going to Kitabu, but I wanted to say that one way of addressing the problem is not only about investing in creating jobs but it's also about making our education system relevant to the realities of the country like we said in the case of um Kurang, that the education system i mean for me it's not tailored in a way that suits the realities of this country if the education system is tailored in a way that suits our realities then it will automatically generate employment opportunities for these people that are graduating still we talk about the relevance of our education system people will graduate from our school system they will be able to create jobs for themselves rather than relying on the government to create jobs for them that is one way of dealing with the problem of youth migration to the backward thank you uh mr kitabu Fadi, thank yes. you for joining us i mean really if there is one person who was seen as the surprise package tonight it's you you have a lot of people out there who have ne never even heard Kitabu speak English. A lot of people were surprised by your English. 
I was monitoring how people were reacting to your performance tonight. In, in, in terms of this debate, mm -hmm. you joining fellow political leaders yes. to speak to Gambians, to put across your uh, 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 message, how do you feel about that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Njai. Uh, I was a great honor uh, because uh, this is what is what it takes to be relevant in a country. Because today, uh, being a good citizen of a country, you need to take a step. So these are the things we can do. We, can, we cannot all be elected into office, but one thing is certain, we can send the message out. So that is what, is, what have been displayed here. So I am very, very honored to be here. I was uh, informed, uh, uh, it was so prompt, but I you know, did some research and you know, talked with my technical team uh, to be able to, uh, to do what I do here. Uh, Gambia, like I said before, uh, it's in a, uh, a serious uh, problem. But what we need to understand is, you know, the first thing we need to understand is like, we need to uh, enhance unity because that's the most important thing. And politics right now is what is, you know, dividing us. So we need to run away from that. We shouldn't bring out uh, politics of, you know, tribalism, politics of problems and castigation and insults. We need to run away from that. This country needs urgent development. So that urgent development cannot be attained with certain problems that we are giving ourselves. People think that politics is going to take them to Arjana. One another killer. Member killer don't want to go. Political nakita anyama anyanta killer nyami nyimbangko bita nyato. One thing you yes. have, I found interesting in your deliberations, yes. you were asked about the APRC NPP alliance. Yes. You said we need to unite. We need to come together and yes. forget about the past. Yes. I mean, why that position? Why did you take that position? Yeah, uh, I've taken that position because looking at even our religion in Islam, uh, there are lots of jihads that happens. People have been killed. People have been, you know, you know, you know, uh, beheaded. You know, but after everything, they all came together. Now look at Islam; it's all over the world. It's the same thing. Gambia is a small country. We are all related. You know, we are all one. So uh, what happened? 22 years ago, it happened. At least it should, you know, we need uh, like uh, more of civic education, reconciliation. We need to do that. That is the work for the like for the artists and other people. They need to engage those people to sensitize people on how to, you know, unite and come together. But one thing is with me: let's throw everything behind if you want this country to develop. Moms, you have a question yes. for Kitabu? Yeah. yeah. Um, Quickly. Uh, Kitabu, I just want to know. Um, if you become president, yes. where exactly would your main focus be? Because we know we have, I mean, yes. various um, issues. Around. Yeah, we have lots of issues in this country. Uh, if I want to be specific uh, in, uh, in an area, I would be maybe, uh, I would be maybe selfish a little bit. But what I want to uh, tell uh, the Gambians is uh, we are observing and we know the problem of this nation. We are not going to let, let anything out. The agricultural system will need to be supported. You know, because I, I keep on saying this. Why do we keep on graduating extension officers? They'll be going around with, you know, motor bicycles and going from farms that, if you read those farms, you won't see any development in there. Let's invest in our youths. Let's push them into agriculture. Let's help them to know what is uh, the modern agricultural system. If we do that, we will we, we provide, we will we, we'll help them to, to, to acquire jobs and things will be efficient in terms of agriculture. At the same thing, look at our, 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 our health sector. If you look at our health sector, that is a big problem. Look at when the pandemic started in, 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 in the whole world. We were having one research company trying to uh, you know, you know, tell us the results and everything. What is our, where, where is our own Gambian research company or research center? We need that. If MRC is out of this country, who are going to, you know, contain the pandemic? Who are going to do the research and everything? You know, we need to look at our private hospitals. Why are they ch ch charging lots of money for for, for, for for healthcare system? But I, I think people will people will prefer going to the health uh, the, the private sectors if the government health centers are not doing doing their job. I live in Abuko. 
you know, every day, you, if you go to the, uh, Abu, Abu, Abu C. Johnson, you find ladies, you know, queuing for scanning. And we have in hospitals here. You go on Facebook, people are looking for donations to go over, oversee treatments. Those are things that, you know, it's, it's, it's a pity. You know, we are, we, we, are, we are in the 21st century. We need to look up to this and we need to, you know, uh, concentrate because health is something that is very, very important. So it's very, very and important. And finally, Kitabu, yes. are you really going to contest the December election? Yes, I, I will contest this election, inshallah. And I will surprise many people because I'm from a family that is very, very big. That is the arts industry. And Nim Maman Tada would have a dual, and Dungisha Labe dual. Yeah, let me just ask him uh, pretty yes. quick. I mean, we all know the deficit at the IEC is, yes. of course, quite um, a yes. significant amount. Yes. I mean, many would be wondering um, who is behind Kitabu in bringing out that uh, amount? Yeah, Kitabu, so, is a, Kitabu is an artist. Uh, lately, all seen, I've, I've went to Guinea Bissau, uh, I went there for a fundraising tour. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it was uh, great. And uh, we have uh, party militants who are willing to, to put their hand and money uh, into the affairs of the country. Because the affairs of the PDP is not only for PDP, it's for the whole country. So putting your hand and money into that is like you are, you are a patriotic citizen who is trying to see your country move to the next level. Thank, thank you, you very much, Kitabu, yes, and, so and much. good luck. So we'll yes. invite uh, Mr. Kurang, yes. uh, Mohamed Kurang, will be our last uh, person to speak to on the, on the, on the panel. But then, You've had Kitabu, mm. Mr. Jai. Well, interesting. Um, I, I thought maybe, um, you know, he will tell us that, oh, at the end of the day, I, I will go into a coalition. But he's so confident that he's, <laughs> he's going to contest yeah, yeah, the election. He's and, but, um, and he said that by the grace of God, he's going to win. <laughs> yeah. But um, I am interested to see Kitabu, I mean, in Marina Parade, number one Marina Parade, as His Excellency Kitabu Party. And then, we see what, what he has for us. But then, like I said earlier on, I think he was also, just like Jeng, he was also speaking more generally. I mean, he just said here that he, they know the problems of this country. But these are the questions that were posed to him at the debate. I mean, and he kept, kept on saying, we will have to assess, we will have to assess. This is what I yes, said. I mean, oppositions are government in waiting. They are shadow governments. You should be able to diagnose the problems and know the problems, at least at the basic level. Going into the integrities, probably you need to be in government before you do that. And it's understandable for the first hundred days you try to do, I mean, some assessments, which is understandable. But then you must be able to diagnose the problem before you get there. It's just like you are on the reserve bench in a football match. You're waiting for the coach to tell you that, hey, you cannot just say that I'm not studying the game when I'm in the game. That's when I will study. We have an assessment. 90 minutes will be over. So for him, before he realized that 100 days is too much small, five years will be too small for him. And now the big man is in the building, Mr. al Hadi Quran. Thank you very much. It's always nice to see you on our, on our, on our pra platforms and our, on our, on our shows. Uh, Mr. Kurang, why do you feel the need to take part in tonight's debate? Yeah, thank you very much for um, uh, inviting me here. Um, uh, always nice to be here. Well, I think uh, you know, it's an opportunity for us to put our case across, for people to hear from us. I think uh, the Gambian people right, deserve to hear from people who would like to represent them you know, in the government, especially as president. I think the citizens deserve that. In, the, in some countries, it's compulsory, as you know. In America, for example, you have to participate in a presidential debate. So I think it's not compulsory in our country, but at this moment in time when everybody is curious about what's going to happen, everybody is uh, concerned about what has already transpired between 2016 and now this has to be part of the democratic process and obviously it's free you know so i think uh, if every genuine politician is looking for publicity so if you are not coming here then wh what have you got to hide so i have nothing to hide i'm ready to be here to talk about it and then different opportunities as and when they come moms yes uh, um, we, we haven't had the opportunity you talk about the health and of course, um, one thing I hear almost all politicians uh, speak of when they talk about health, of course, which is very important, that is the normal um, hospitals and of course women dying in labor. But so far, I haven't heard any politician mention anything about the Tanka Tanka cycle. Yeah, mental, mental health. The mental health, Me mental health. When those people are always complaining yeah. of the government 
I mean, sidelining them. I sure. mean, of course, you if voting into office, voted into office, of course. Yeah. What would you do about the Tanka Tanka um, uh, when, in, when, and of course, tackling health? I, I think uh, health is a very major issue, you know, in this country right now. What is happening? We seeing, we know that people are dying everywhere because of the current health crisis and global health crisis. You know, in terms of, uh, you know, what is happening with Corona, but. It is worse from one country to another. We have seen other countries that are on top of the game, how they are able to, to take care of their health system, to be able to rise up to the challenge. And we've seen Gambia, we're basically not able to rise up to the, to the challenge. And that is because of the fundamental health issues that we have in terms of infrastructure and also in terms of staffing, right? Having the right personnel. If you look at the ratio of doctors to nurses, in this uh, nurses to the population in this country per head is really very wide margin between us and so many other countries. So I think in every health sector it is a concern. In the, in the case of mental health in particular it's a major concern because even the general population have got very limited understanding about mental health issues. Every day we are passing people who are mentally challenged and they are walking on the streets. Sometimes they pose danger, not only to their families, but also to the general population. And I can imagine when they go inside Tanka Tanka, sometimes even though they are not mentally sound, but they know what is a right condition and what is not a right condition. If the conditions there are conducive, right, for a mentally ill person, obviously we are not expecting them to be absconding so much. And obviously we know one medical center is not enough for health services, when we come to government, our major concern would be to ensure right, that proper health facilities are available for mentally challenged people, not only at the time they go to the... There are some mental health conditions that could be better so resolved, maybe with counselling. We do not have proper counselling in our general hospitals and also in so many communities. I think this is a challenge that could have made the job of Tanka Tanka much easier. Mr. Kurang, you have a lot of people who are interested in this job. I mean, we've seen SFL say, I am the most competent, I am the best out of this whole entire group of people who want this job. What sets you apart from everyone else? Yeah, I, I think uh, obviously it's, it's good that it's coming up because uh, it's still part of the debate. Yes. Yeah, people say it's not a competition, but it's a friendly competition, right? It should be friendly. Um, I, I, if a lawyer say he's most qualified to become a manager, then obviously accountants. But the experience is very important. Yes. I think the Gambia at the moment is looking for somebody who has been tested. It's not about your academic qualifications. Yes. I'm an academist, but I don't believe that the academic qualification is the criteria. And I also think that not all experiences are relevant for the presidential job, right? The experience, this country, is, as you can see, is a very diverse country. You need to be able to relate to the common people. I've got a background, right, in, in, I mean, as a poor person coming from a rural area, I mean, going through it, rising up, and then obviously growing up in the city, right? I have contacted with so many people in this country for the past 22 years. I haven't gone anywhere. Essentially, I've been in this country. So I'm in touch with the reality. My professional experience as an entrepreneur is very important because, you see, you may say I've worked with an NGO or I've worked with the UN system. The UN has been here for 50 years. They have not been able to solve any problem. So how can it be a reference of having a qualification to run a country? We need entrepreneurs. When we started Youth for Change, what we said is that even when we come into government, we need to look for people who not necessarily only an academic qualification, but have been tested. To be tested is very difficult criteria to determine. But to be tested means you must have gone through certain things that show your capabilities. I've trained 20,000 people or more in this country. I've had an impact on the life of so many young people in this country. I've got a diverse education, obviously. So I think I know the problem of the common man, right? I have an understanding of what the farmers need to survive. Education is a major problem in this country, and I've been in the heart of it. I am able to integrate this country both for Arabic education and also English education, which is very critical at this moment in time. Because you cannot develop by leaving half of your population marginalized. And that's a problem. It's a problem inherited from the colonial system. The colonial system of education that gives priority to the children of the chiefs, 
and the elites is still going on and we need to break it. That is why we formed Jal of Tutors. But the march needs to continue and I think to be in government is the best place My to question, address it. What is the one thing that makes you different that Gambians should look at and say, okay, Mr. I, Kurang is the person. I think should... one thing is what I am saying matches with my track record. I have integrated. What I have spoke, I can be trusted to handle this. I can be trusted that when I hold this position, I am not going to look for my individual interests, but I will put the interests of the country forward. This is manifested in my career as a teacher for 20 years, not looking for money, but putting people's interests first. In my career as a commissioner in the Janet Commission, even when salary is at stake, or the career is at stake, I came out and spoke. And I think if people follow my track record, both online and offline, I am consistent. I think consistency is very important for a presidency. Ezra, do you have a question for? Yeah, I um, have a for, question, but uh, just to comment. I mean, my interest is on the issue of security sector mm -hmm. reform. I think if you talked about that. I mean, Mr. Jase deliberated at length on that. Um, you know, one thing that was missing um, has to do with the level of international support. We all know that the political will was there on the side of the government in 2017, when September 2017, when the security sector reform program was launched. Well, later on, as we move towards the 2021 election, um, what I've observed is that um, the political will was no more there on the side of the government. And currently, as we speak, it's not there. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm talking on the security sector reform is of research interest to me. That's an area that I'm interested in. But one thing you've mentioned um, when you were talking about security sector reform had to do with downsizing. At some point, you, you said we need to be cautious about you know, removing generals. Where do they go? But also, we need to get rid of people that are not needed there. That has to do with downsizing. But there's also what we call right sizing in security sector reform. That point is missing. I mean, it's not only about removing people, but also about getting people in the right positions. People that are in positions that they're supposed not to be in are removed there and relocated or put in positions that they're supposed to be in. This is the concept of right-sizing in security sector reform. And I think the president himself, Varo himself, talked about this, that there are people, they will do downsizing and right-sizing. But you have not seen much of this. We have seen that the political will is no more there because of, the, you know, we are approaching towards election. We are in an election year. And obviously that is understandable. But I would want to see a, a, a large mama, the Kurang-led government, really, really prioritize security sector reform. I think Mr. Jassy himself made mention of something which is largely been ignored by a lot, that security sector reform is even essential in fighting corruption. Because when there are, you know, right reform, you know, security mem members of the security sector are, you know, kind of professionalized, you know, subject to democratic accountability and control. They can actually help in fighting corruption, investigating and all that. Not. But there is also one point that has to do with fighting corruption. This was asked, and I was expecting that all of you, including yourself, to talk about this. When they said, how do you fight corruption? I was expecting somebody or you to say that the legal frameworks must be there in order to fight corruption. It's not only about us saying that, oh, we need to generate the whatever, we need to make sure that people are being well paid because here when you talk about fighting corruption, the only thing people tell you is that you need to give good salaries. I mean, good salary is not the solution alone. I mean, there are people who are earning $50,000 in this country, $100,000 in this country, they are still corrupt. You understand? What do we need to do? We all know that the anti-corruption commission and the anti-corruption bill is at the National Assembly lying down there. With an Alaji Mamadi led government, I expect that these legal frameworks are there to so make that sure is that the laws are implemented. There on their yeah, exactly. And also, uh, uh, yeah, and also <laughs> the issue of the issue of the issue of yeah. I mean, you know, ethics, yeah. the issue of morality, the issue of integrity, the issue of patriotism. This needs to be inculcated in the young ones, in the school system. We need to be teaching our kids. In order to fight corruption one way, this is a long term plan. The short term plan could be to make sure that the legal frameworks are there, the laws are implemented, they are enforced to the latter to make sure that we fight corruption. But the long-term plan will be, how do we integrate or inculcate this in the minds of our young people at the school level? Those that are coming from the school level, as kids, they are taught, this is what belongs to you, this does not belong to you. With the right, you know, bring, I mean, how do you call it, um, orientation at that level, once they get to public office, I think they will be able to know what belongs to them and what does not belong to them. And this is only He, he is the course. expert here. You have a yeah, reaction? I, I think uh, with security sector reform, yeah, we all realize, you know, the square pegs into round holes issue. But also the political will, like he said, is an issue. You cannot get foreign funding, you know, or any funding as such. If you, you, your interest is manifested already, that what you have interest in is self-perpetuation. Yes. Obviously, it manifests in how your expenditure goes. So the government will not be able to attract the right type of expenditure that is needed, or, in, or, 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 or how do I call it, funding that is needed to do a security sector reform. 
for corruption, well, people say there is still some amount of legal framework at the moment. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if government recognizes that people have taken money, government has a mandate to set up commissions. One, two, at any moment in time, the presidency can call for a commission to investigate any financial ruling. And there are already laws in place. In fact, people say there are already very stringent laws in place, economic crime laws in place. The Gambia has one of the most stringent economic crime laws that Yaya Jame put in place at the moment that the government can still use, not disproportionately, but obviously fairly, crime is crime. People are being charged in this country exactly. for all kinds of crimes, except economic crimes. Exactly. So the so framework, the, the legal means that the government needs to prosecute the people that are needed. You may have a, a anti-corruption uh, a department as such. It may end up like any other commission or anti-corruption commission. Bill, the bill it may end up like any other commission. Mm -hmm. They are susceptible to manipulation by individual needs. So it comes back to the same question. What is the leadership, right? Without the leadership, right? In management, obviously, we know, you know, it's the responsibility of the board if it's a company. So the, the, the ball, the, the box, the American state, stops on which table? So corruption is such an issue when you have simple basic, even the police have got laws in which they can take action against people who have misappropriated public funds. Those laws are already in place. But where is the political will? Are you winning this Mr. Mr. election? Are oh, you winning? Oh yes, we, I am winning, inshallah. I'm just from the provinces. No mm. politician has traveled more than me in the past. Will you accept past, defeat if you lose? In the past six Will months. you accept defeat if you Why lose? Why would I not accept defeat? It's I joined a democratic <laughs> process. I trust the IEC, the Independent Electoral Commission. I'm not going to dispute. I hope you don't have an impasse from Ma 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 We'll get the final question and then we will end this coverage. Sure. Yeah, no, uh, oh, you, you are yeah, good. I'm good. I okay, Mr. Kurong, question. thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. On your campaign. Uh, you well, uh, that will bring us to the end of uh, this coverage mm -hmm. uh, here at the American International University, West Africa. Uh, thank you for being there. Until next time, goodbye.